this going? We'll start. And boom. Hello! How's it going, everyone? My name is Durden77. I am still here, I am still alive, and I still have my friend Mark. He's still my friend somehow. It's like been somehow. like a long time, <laughs> and he's still somehow my friend. Like I, I have no idea what's going on here, yep. but I'm gonna take advantage of it because he really likes Spider Man. We both really like Spider Man. I don't know if you remember, but a long time ago, about man, that was dude. Oh, it feels like so long three ago now, ago? especially because of everything going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's probably like I th three, three or four. Yeah, it was when Spider Verse came out, and we were yeah, this place wasn't renovated yet, so that's right because we did it here, so and it's it, like, <laughs> yeah. so it's like three, four years ago. Had to have been whenever Spider Verse came out, it was like a yeah. few months after had that. Had the same shirt on. I haven't watched it. Yeah. Since. <laughs> I've just been in the shirt the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I noticed that it was amazing. Um, Not but, planned, by the way. I, I wash my clothes. <laughs> so he says. But, uh, yeah, so we are back because a lot of cool things have been going on in the Spider-Verse, uh, needless to say. And uh, just like Spider-Verse, the movie, we're a little late on talking about this, but we have been talking so much about No Way Home. Um, and once again, it was a similar thing to where we knew we were going to talk about it anyway, so we might as well just record it. Yep. I mean, you know, we have a lot of shit to say. So, um, so yeah, basically this is really kind of just going to be about No Way Home, uh, what we love about the movie, stuff we want to talk about the movie, um, you know, and kind of how it affects how we feel about Spider-Man and things of that nature. So, uh, first off, I guess we just want to start by explaining why we love Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, we might have talked about this a little bit in the last one, I don't remember, but um, real quick, just essentially speaking, um, you know, growing up, um, my uncle was a massive collector of comics. Uh, he had... Uh, Hundreds of thousands of comics, legit, well, at least tens of thousands. Um, he kept them in his shed. Uh, one day, the shed was caught on fire. Horrible, horrible tragedy. He gave me tons of boxes of comics that were burned but were still readable. Uh, so as a child, I had um, a lot of old, especially kind of golden age comics. Mm -hmm. um, and especially Spider-Man, of course, was one of my favorites to read. Uh, a lot of the stories I had were kind of broken up. Uh, you know, because since it was kind of pieces from mm -hmm. this story, this story, this story, stuff like that. But generally speaking, I always loved Spider-Man. I always loved his stories. And I always just... He always seemed a little different than the other heroes. Yeah. He always, yeah, always just a little bit like... I always wanted to know what was going on with him. Um, you know, and over time... I mean, you know, let's be real. Everybody loves Spider-Man to yeah. a certain extent, pretty much. I mean, I, there's very few people that like are like, I don't like that guy. Except for J. Jonah James. Yeah, exactly. If, if you see somebody say, I don't like Spider-Man, rip off their mask and it's J. Jonah James. They, yeah, they're like, gah! <laughs> Fooled again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, he's always been a hugely special part of... of of my life, definitely one of my favorite superheroes, if not my favorite. It's always so hard to decide, but just really special. And I feel like what they're doing with him lately is starting to really match how special he can be, mm -hmm. at least with a general audience. So, um, you know, Spider-Man, I, I just, I just love him. I love seeing whatever he's up to. What about you, Mark? Yeah, like uh, when I was little, I lived within walking distance of a comic book shop, and uh, my family knew the owner, so. A lot of days from school, I would just stop there because, you know, my family would rather me be there than just home alone as like a, you know, seven-year-old or whatever. Mm -hmm. And basically, he let me read whatever I wanted as long as I did my homework first, you know, for a responsible adult. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, I gravitated towards Spider-Man because, you know, there was a show out. So, of course, I saw, oh, like, that, him and the X-Men, him, the X-Men, yeah. and Batman. Like, because of those originally those 90s shows like those are the ones i instantly recognize like most people yeah and the best part about that is because of spider-man and because of how how much of like a joining link he is to all these different communities in the marvel universe he was like the perfect person to start reading to get introduced to marvel yeah because like he knows Tony, he knows the X-Men, he knows the Fantastic Four, like he knows pretty much everybody. So at any point, anyone could pop up in a Spider-Man comic. Like, yeah. like, like Spider-Man, I say Spider-Man, Daredevil, Moon Knight, those people are probably one of my favorites because they're a little bit more obscure and Spider-Man work with them all the time because yeah. they're all in New York. 
So he'd be swinging around, oh, is there a what's up? And then they'd, they'd do a mission together, whatever. Like, okay, see you later. I gotta go study for college. I mean, do superhero stuff, and he leaves, you know? <laughs> so, like, it was really cool to see him kind of be an everyman. Like, he, yeah. he just had regular shit he had to take care of. Yeah. Like, there, I remember one of my favorite favorite uh, issues was the whole issue was him just trying to get rent. That was the whole issue. That was it. And, like, I went to my mom, and, like, you know, I was little, so I didn't understand. I was like, what's rent? What does that mean? And she's like, when you live somewhere, you need to pay to live there sometimes. And I was like, that blows. This sucks ass. <laughs> and she's like, you're right, it does. It does <laughs> but, like, yeah, like, I, I, it's, he was, like, he was, like, the introduction to the Marvel Universe for me. He was the person who knew everyone. Like, he really was the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah, totally. That knew everybody. Like, even people that didn't really like him were still, like, yeah, he's all right, I guess. Yeah. You know, like, even Punisher is like, eh, you know, <laughs> you don't I, like anybody, but, you know. I think that's a big reason why just, and that's, you know, why we love Spider-Man, but we know this character is so popular generally, and I, I really think that's it, is mm-hmm. I think when it comes down to it, he's probably just the most relatable superhero. Mm-hmm. He, he's really, he really is an everyman. He's the kind of guy, and you've mentioned this plenty before, even within the, 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 the uh, universe he inhabits, the mm-hmm. characters treat him as an everyman. Yeah, you know, he's, they, he's they, just a dude, and they like him for it. Yeah. You know, um, and, and so I think that translates so well. Um, so it's just, yeah. Um, so we love Spider Man, mm-hmm. um, and this fucking movie rolled. <laughs> I've never, I've never genuinely cheered so much in a movie before. The only <laughs> movie that came close was Endgame. Yeah, man. When everybody came out of that, those portals, yeah. that was the closest thing I got to be like, okay, this is pretty fucking yeah. nice. But like, this, the whole movie I was like, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Every single time. Yeah. I think parts of this movie and maybe overall were even more hyped than Endgame. Mm-hmm. I, I think we actually saw it together um, mm-hmm. at, at the midnight launch Thursday night uh, before um, so we had a very high energy crowd. My, me being one of those people mm-hmm. as well as him. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was just, yeah, honestly, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had in movie oh, theater. Oh, abs- absolutely. Um, if, if not, if not the best, um, I, I think that, um, you know, there's so much to talk about, but just out of the gate, I think that's what's so impressive about this movie is it could have totally just been a nostalgia circle, mm-hmm. circle jerk. Uh, they could have gotten away with this. Oh, Absolutely, could, that movie could have been one hundred percent fan service. Yeah, and it would have, and people would have been like, okay, people would have lost their minds. Mm-hmm. Everybody would have went to go see it. Everybody would have, you know, it was still would have been an event. It would have been a movie that I came out of still been like, this is awesome. That was mm-hmm. so much fun. But if the movie was not good, then eventually I would see that. You know, I love these Marvel movies, mm-hmm. but if if they've got problems, I do you know address exactly. those because you love them. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know? so it's like a a situation where. I honestly expected after seeing this movie and knowing myself and how cynical and stuff I can be, I, I expected after about a week for me to be like, you know, it wasn't, mm-hmm. uh, now that the hype's died down, like, there was this problem and there was this, and, and I even went to go see it again. Mm-hmm. Um, nah, man. It's yeah. a really fucking yeah. cool, it's, great movie, yeah, it's man. Just a, it's just a solid movie that works. It tells a good story and like, I will always, like, the MCU has done a really good job. I think the first superhero movie that did this where it was like, yeah, this movie has superheroes in it, but this is also just a good story. This story is just good was probably The Dark Knight. When The Dark Knight came out, like, I love the Raimi trilogy, but it was like, this is still a superhero, like, fantastical, you yeah. know. But Dark Knight was like, this is a gritty crime drama yeah. that just so happens to have Batman in it. That's basically what it felt like. No, true. And, like, that's kind of when I started seeing, like, I was, like, people started being like, oh, superhero movies can be, like, serious movies. Like, and I love that because, of yeah. course, I always felt like that because I grew up on all that stuff, right? Yeah. But, like, what Marvel's doing here is they're, they are making complete movies like complete well-written well-developed stories then they're putting all the sprinkles on afterwards yeah right then then they're doing all the here's all the fan service here's all the quippy lines here's all this yeah. but at its core we're going to make sure this story is a good compelling story for sure yeah you know? yeah absolutely and I, they're I, killing it. I agree and, it, and it's just you can you can see that in this movie there, there's so much about this movie that I truly think just works mm-hmm. like you know so so well and and 
oh man, what were you just saying? There, there was a point that, oh yeah, yeah, about um, uh, the Sam Raimi trilogy and mm-hmm. Batman and stuff like that. I think it's so cool. It's what you said about the Dark Knight is 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 true, mm-hmm. um, and how it almost feels like a kind of like a Scorsese movie. Yeah, it happens to have Batman in it. Yeah. But I think what's so cool about this movie is it's a great movie that is fantastical. It's a this is a it comic is, it book is, it ass is, movie. It is turned up to like eleven. It is like comic book. Yeah, like they, they you know, because with the Dark Knight, you have this general audience mm-hmm. that will automatically kind of think it's cool because it's like, oh, this isn't a comic book movie. This is this is a gritty movie. Mm-hmm. You kind of get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. They said, fuck all that. Yeah. We're going to make an awesome movie. We don't care about, it. like, this is, it's, it's just, I can't imagine a general audience accepting a movie like this like 10 or 15 no. years ago. Well, because, and like, there, this is a whole other thing I wanted to talk about, but like, Marvel has done such a good job of giving general pop the general population a taste of what reading comics is actually like. Agree. Because again, I love the Raimi trilogy. It has a very sp- special trace place in my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, the original X Men. You know, for what it was at the time, it was great. Absolutely. Right? Like Blade. All these. All the old Ghost Rider. Even those. <laughs> I, I, I love Nick Cage. So, <laughs> you know, it I was great. That movie when it, it came was out. Great. <laughs> oh man! But anyway, oh, watch it again. It's <laughs> mercy. All out of mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Holy never, shit. Never changed Nick Cage. But, anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, all those movies were very campy in a good way. Because they're, they're comic books. Uh, they're, yeah. They're comic books. But, like, the thing about it is, in all those movies, no matter how good they are, the one fundamental thing they were missing was it actually being a comic book world. Because mm-hmm. at any point, like, the thing that makes comic books so crazy is at any point when you're reading any comic book in a, in a major universe, like DC, you know, uh, Image, uh, Marvel, you know, all those, at any point, any other character that those, that company owned could pop up. Yeah. And they're not just, it's not just a cameo. That character has their own independent story that's running right. and them showing up contributes to their story as well. It's not just like, yeah, we just threw a cameo of so-and-so and and they're there and then they're gone like no like there is a continuity there is a it is a big giant organic world that is growing like the world itself is a character Mm -hmm. yeah and and with the mcu they they're finally doing it yeah as soon as iron man started it was like iron man then like you saw nick fury at the end the avengers initiative it's like at that point, I'm like, are they really going to fucking do this? Are they doing this? And they, they killed it. Yeah, they man. killed it. The fact that now when people see like, oh, like the, fa- the fact that Doctor Strange was in this movie and everybody was like, oh yeah, it's Doctor Strange. <laughs> like, yeah. If, you, if, if they would have put, if, imagine like the X-Men and all of a sudden they have like Reed Richards talking to somebody. They'd yeah. Like, who, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> they don't know who he is. Yeah. The fact that they did such a good job of being like, all right, we're going to introduce Doctor Strange. He's going to do his thing. The character, people are going to know who he is. Yeah. Even if you've only seen half of these Marvel movies, you know who Doctor Strange is. You know who Tony is. You know who all these characters are. So when they pop up in another movie that's not theirs, they have weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not cheap. It's not like a little like fan servicey cameo. Totally. That appearance has weight. That character has their own story that they're going through. And they even like showed that bill. Yeah, Doctor Strange was here. By the way, the other end credit scene here is Multiverse of Madness because you saw Doctor Strange. He was an integral part of this movie. You see the rest of his thing going on in that trailer. And yeah. I'm like, that's so brilliant because now people understand they, 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 are, they are like basically forcing people to understand what reading yeah. comics is like. And it's like, yeah, for, for people out there who watch everything, all the shows, all the movies, everything, you're going to get, like, all the references. Yeah. But even if you don't watch everything, just, like, if you haven't watched ev- or haven't read every single Marvel comic that's ever been made, you can pick up any run, read it, and have a great time. And mm-hmm. you understand the story. And anything's, like, hey, this character did the There'll be little snippets. By the way, this happened in issue... 55 of Hulk, yeah. this happened, blah, 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 blah. Okay, back to the story. They, they give you that. Yeah. And, like, they're doing it now, like, all the Disney Plus shit. Yeah. Perfect example of it's like, yeah, you didn't get that? Well, you should have been watching the Disney Plus shows. Fuck you. That's basically <laughs> what they're saying. Yeah. But even if you didn't, there was still so much. I, I watched that movie with people who haven't watched any of the Disney Plus shows, mm-hmm. have only watched the first, the, the, the other two Tom Holland Spider Man movies. Mm-hmm. 
And that was all they watched. Right. They haven't watched any. They did not watch Doctor Strange. And they, they came out of the movie fucking loving it. <laughs> they were like, this is great. This is great. Yeah. Like, I, they were there for it. And I'm like, that, that is a good story. Yeah. I completely agree with everything you said. It's like Marvel has really been training the general mm-hmm. audience over, like, you know, the idea of, of everything you were saying. But just, just the general concept of, like, the multiverse. You know, yes. could you imagine, like, yeah, like you said, like, in the X-Men movie. What if, like, in the very first X-Men movie... We were hanging out with our Wolverine, and all of a sudden, like, a portal opened up, and it was like, whoa, it's like multiple, like, people would be like, I'm what the ultimate, hell is, I'm ultimate Wolverine. Right? <laughs> like, I'm people, zombie universe people, like, Wolverine. fucking nerds, like, what yeah. is, what's going on right now? Like, what is this shit? Like, and now it's like, what, you don't know about the multiverse? What are you, a loser? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, totally. It's like, the script has been completely flipped, and mm-hmm. what you said exactly is so true about, you know, with comics, when people enter a, a, a comic... They are not only there, but they're bringing their whole world with them, mm-hmm. kind of. And I and I believe that this movie, more than any other Marvel movie, mm-hmm. capitalized on that because Absolutely. man, yeah, dude, we like so much to talk about, but we gotta go into these fucking villains, man. Oh, oh man. my god! So so I feel so good. I'm so glad we recorded that last video because you can go back and watch the last video well before this movie was even on the radar at all. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting there preaching about how Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin's probably yeah. the best live-action villain ever. Yep. And it, it's just like, it, the idea that we're here now yep. is unbelievable. I, I am obsessed yep. with that guy. I, I, I'm Don't obsessed let your with... memes be dreams. <laughs> Thank you, Willem Dafoe. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, and, and, and it, it's just... So once again, you know, this could have so easily been a thing where it's like, hey, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin showed up. Uh, you remember him? By. That was cool. Like mm-hmm. that. That made your dick hard, didn't it? That was fun. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. And honestly, I would be like, yeah, 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 cool. Yeah. That was it. No, and man. After the dopamine wears off, you're like, all right. I wish he would have did more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or something I like she, that. I wish he called me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but what they did was so unbelievably impressive. Not only was I scared about this movie going in because of the, the Spider-Man 3 syndrome of I was worried about potentially too many villains. It's mm-hmm. like, how are they going to balance this? You know, that's a big problem with Spider-Man 3, mm-hmm. as we know. Um, but not only did they balance it, they essentially gave these characters sequels. It is fucking nuts mm-hmm. to me. And I, I still, I, it's been months since I've seen the movie. Well, not uh, when, when it came out in uh, December. So it's been a, it's yeah. about a month. But it is still just thinking about the fact mm-hmm. that Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin essentially now has a sequel. And, mm-hmm. and, and thinking about... Well, closure. They, they, closure. They gave everyone closure. And, of course, and you realize that, like, they basically gave us a Sinister Six. And yeah. You mm-hmm. can say that they were one-off, but, I mean, they got that tree. Yeah. <laughs> That tree, that was number six. Wait, what tree? <laughs> Did you remember when he, he webbed the tree and it was in the holding cell? Because there were six holding cells. In yeah. And there was only five villains. So everyone was like, who's the sixth villain? And when he webbed the tree and the tree was in that thing, and it's like, is this a, is this a scientist that used to be a tree? And it's like, it's just a tree. And so that tree... <laughs> I think I missed that somehow. Remember, so so when, when he was trying to fight Electro, and he webbed Electro and went through him, and it hit the web, hit the tree. Oh! And the tree went into the, the holding cell. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Tree, tree M- six. MVP villain. <laughs> the tree. Dr. Tree. Dr. <laughs> Professor Rope. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Oh, God damn it! That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they basically gave us a, a pseudo Sinister Six, and it fucking they did. It was great. And, and, and what the decisions they made with the characters mm-hmm. were so on point. Like what you know, with Otto, he should have been the one that was redeemed. Mm-hmm. They met, they let him be redeemed mm-hmm. with one of the foes, Green Goblin. It, you know, the Goblin will always be generally Peter Parker's you know greatest mm-hmm. foe. And so the fact that he is not only, you know, he basically is, even though he was at the very end, he's almost essentially completely defined Tom Holland's yes. Spider-Man. Oh, now. oh, um, absolutely. And then... We'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm going to say. It's like we oh. got... But, like, it, it just... What they did with these villains is just... It's just... Honestly, it is fucking insane. Like, it, I cannot... Every single time I think about it, it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. That, like, it, as we're talking about, you know, they're really expanding the world, the MCU... You can now essentially watch the Sam Raimi movies, and they are They're part hidden. of the MCU. They're and hidden. the fact that they were able to do that and it works is just fucking insane. Yeah. They, they they made they made the the Raimi trilogy and the Mark Webb trilogy or two oh, movies. Yeah. Two movies. <laughs> yeah. They made them canon, which is crazy. It's bad shit insane. Can, can you imagine? And they could do they could easily. And it works. Oh, like it totally. They did they it in can, a way that works. They could easily. 
easily have Hugh Jackman pop, pop up later and be like, yeah, another portal opened up and this is a whole other universe. Yeah. Which, I mean, do you know Deadpool has already been confirmed to come to the MCU? I did not know that. I know already, he's, of course, he's part of Disney now. Yeah. They didn't know. They already confirmed he's coming. They, they haven't said, they haven't said a lot, but like, there is a Deadpool movie happening in the future. Gotcha. So like, they could easily just be like, yeah, he was from another universe. Yeah. Man. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, if something like that pops up in Multiverse of Madness. Like, yeah. it's the multiverse of madness. That's, that's <laughs> the perfect place to be like, yo, what's up? I'm from another universe. And uh, shit was crazy there, but I'm here now, I guess. I want to say even Benedict Cumberbatch or whatever said that, like, multiverse is... if he, He's like, if you thought Spider-Man was crazy, like, it's like, dude, what? Oh my hey! God. <laughs> it's like, that what? Trailer, as, soon as, as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw Shuma Garak yeah, in the trailer, man. I was like... You sons of bitches! I'm, <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. You give me Shuma. I'm. I. I love H.P. Lovecraft. I love that that kind of like cosmic horror yeah. Cthulhu. Like that's my jam. Mm-hmm. Like that is that is my jam. And Shuma Graf is like the Cthulhu eldritch monster of the MCU. The fact that they just put him. <laughs> they just put. There wasn't a teaser. Yeah. His whole ass. <laughs> Eye face thing was just in that trailer. Just, What's up? They got to reference Marvel vs. Capcom. I feel like with oh, because like God. if you know Shuma, like let's be real, you probably know mm-hmm. him from Marvel. Like you, like you probably you've read some comic. You probably knew him before. Yeah, he's, but he's, most he's people, yeah, but <laughs> most people that know Shuma Garath in any capacity know him because mm-hmm. of Marvel vs. Capcom. Mm-hmm. So they got to do like one like Mystic Stare or something I mean, like that. Or I like, mean, they did it with uh, Thanos in in Endgame. No, in Infinity War. They referenced Marvel's Capcom 2 Thanos with the bubbles. When did he do the bubble? In, uh... When Gamora went to stab herself and she opened her hand and they were just all bubbles. Oh, that's, yeah. That's what they, they, they were referencing that. Huh. Yeah. So, okay. so they know. That's what I'm saying. They, okay. they, they know. They, okay. they know all the, like, Marvel, Disney and Marvel are really good at getting people in there mm-hmm. that are for real fans. Yeah. Like, actual fans. Like, there's there's not some, it's not just a bunch of, like, big wigs in a corporate house like, oh, I guess we're gonna make money. It's like, yeah. no, we're gonna make this movie have these fans lose their mind. And that's very obvious, too. Yes. From, like, the, because if this was a movie that was built by suits, you could see it. And, it, mm-hmm. and it's not, this is a movie that you could tell they were excited mm-hmm. to make, you know? And they, they tried to, this was a, a love letter. Yeah. This was a love letter. For Almost sure. every Marvel movie I've watched so far has been straight up just love letter. You can tell they care. Yeah, they're like, they're like, yeah, we, we know what we're doing. Yeah. We know that you people love this. We know that you we we know that you've got to this point by taking all these different roads, yeah. and we're going to address as many of them as we can. They're, they're not going to get everything because they're only human. They can't. They only have so many so many hours they can do in that movie. But like, the references they've done, man, are just so. It just makes me so happy. It really does. Like it's it, just yeah. it's so. It really it, does. It feels so good. Yeah. To to have something that was such a big part of my childhood, such a good part of my teenage years, college, everything. Because I've been reading comics the whole time, mm-hmm. and to see it develop into this thing where people like the fact that I can go to a bar and talk to somebody, a stranger about Doctor Strange. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like that wouldn't happen before. They'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Get out of here! Like. <laughs> Then he did what? There were tentacles? Like, yeah. get out. Like, get it's out. crazy. It's like, like yeah. we said, the script is flipped. Now yeah. you're, now you're cool if you know about mm-hmm. this stuff. You know, and, and beforehand, it was, it was a little, it was a little no, nerdy. No, I, I, I didn't talk to anybody about like, no. I would have had to, I have to like, test the waters a lot. Yeah, you before imagine like, being like, back in like 2000, going to the bar and be like, hey guys, let's talk about the multiverse with Doctor Strange and like, Dormammu. <laughs> like, Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, but like, yeah, like, even with my friends, like, some, of, some friends I had, I had to like, kind of, Kind of like tiptoe into that stuff. Like, yeah. hey, like, okay, you, do you play Marvel? Oh, you play Marvel? I'm cool. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you, you, who do you mean? Oh, Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you, uh, have you seen all the stuff about it? They're like, okay, <laughs> right. okay. They're, they're, there's the line. There's the line. I get it. All right. <laughs> oh my god, I, we know that feeling. It's just, yeah. We're both very passionate people. You know, it's yeah. like it's like if somebody talks to me about Dragon Ball or something. Oh it's yeah. Like, oh, I love Dragon Ball. It's like, oh, you do? <laughs> do you? Yeah, it's, like, it's like it's like yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like oh yeah, I like when you killed Frieza. It's like oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. It's like yeah, have you watched GT? It's like like oh no, like you yeah, know like, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> you no, know, I just I know Super Saiyan. That's it. Like shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I'm a normal person. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll retreat again. Oh, man, um, man. But yeah, no, like it, it, what they did, you know, and, and I think that the cool thing is not only were the writing for the villains amazing, and, mm-hmm. and once again, just like I said, you can refer back to that video. I think that it, 
Won't Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin is so important to me that if they would have not done this right, I would have felt it. And I and it's the opposite. I mm-hmm. feel so filled with joy mm-hmm. of what they did with him. And, yep. and they could have messed it up so easily. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, I think that truly Peter Parker's motivations were fantastic. Mm-hmm. I loved that it yep. was just like, I don't want this to happen to these guys. Like, yep. the, the movie could have been over if he was just like, Dr. Strange is like, cool, we got to send it back. All right, but, <laughs> but, but Peter is Peter. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it's what we do. It's what we do. This isn't yeah. what we do. And, and, and you know, um, some people, I don't know, like, if you really know the character, mm-hmm. that is such, in my opinion, brilliant writing for him. Just like, this entire movie is just because you can't, you can't not do the right thing. Yeah. And that's fantastic. And, and, it's, and it's also the lesson that every hero in every fictional story, it could be fantasy, it could be super, whatever, every single time you have a hero type person, the message they always try to drive home is you cannot save everyone. Yeah. That's always the first lesson. Yeah, you can try to do everything, but somebody somewhere is going to die and yeah. you can't be everywhere. Yeah. That's just Superman. Then you have no excuse. But, <laughs> but um... <laughs> but, but literally, like, uh, you're right, and I love that they made, one, his motivation's great, but I love that they gave each villain wasn't just a villain. They were a character. Yeah. And they they were literally ripped out of the movie they were in and put into this movie, and it made sense. Yeah. The only person I was on the fence with was Electro, because I was like, I don't really remember, I, I had to rewatch it, I rewatched yeah. it, uh, I rewatched it recently, and honestly, after rewatching it, Totally checks out. Hmm. Totally checks out because they everything about it was so well done because Electro was a, a very it's a very polarizing villain, no pun intended. Yeah. But uh <laughs> it's, it's very polarizing. But watching the Maze Spider-Man 2 again, honestly, his story is so tragic. Hmm. It is so tragic because the movie starts. He's the stereotypical, like, nerd, no one cares, but he's a loser. May, honestly, maybe on the spectrum a little bit. Like, that's kind of the, the vibe they're giving out. And, like, he's, you know, just doing his thing, walking with his blueprints. Gets fucking, it's New York. People just, you know, whatever, get out of my way, whatever, whatever. Gets about to get by a car. Spider-Man saves him. And, like, for somebody who is that unseen by society, for because keep in mind, like, this is a universe where superheroes are real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So this would be the equivalent mm-hmm. of like Willem Dafoe just walking up to you and see like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? I love your shirt, but like, like, yeah, but like, holy shit, yeah, like, holy shit, you'd be f- just talking about, yeah, you'd be it, freaking out. Like, yeah. like, I, like, I met, I met Stan Lee, and a meet and greet forever ago, and that meeting changed my life. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, because like, I mean, this man is responsible for like half the stories I know. Yeah, and like, he was super nice, like. He felt like an old grandpa that just wants to hear how your day is going. I was like, she got man, like it was just so good. Like, so imagine that. Then imagine an actual superhero yeah. that saves people, saving you and being. And he was like, you're my eyes and ears. Like, tr- like I need you. Like, said his name because his name was on his little name tag. Like, then afterwards you see Electro be obsessed about Spider Man because that's what would happen. Mm, yeah, yeah. And then he's just getting shit on and shit on and shit on and shit on. He. On his birthday, he needs to fix the grid that he made that he's not getting credit for. He made a new state-of-the-art power grid to give, like, r- like power to the whole city for very cheap to help people. Mm-hmm. He made those designs. Oscorp took those designs and used them, didn't give him any credit, and denied that he made them. Mm-hmm. So he's already getting, you know, shafted. Then, on his birthday, they're like, oh, by the way, you need to fix this. Stay late. Everybody's going to go home early, but you got to stay late. So he's there doing his thing. He- there's a... Uh, something on the top he goes to fix it he's going to plug it and, he's like, and he calls some guy hey can you turn off the power in sector whatever and he's like yeah fuck you I'm, I'm gone I'm out of the door already bye and I'm like why is everybody so mean to this guy <laughs> like are you kidding me yeah. can you imagine being a pop up like oh yeah you're gonna do something you may you may kill yourself nah I gotta go get my my pizza hut I'm about to be late so he gets shocked, whatever, falls into a bad eels, which, you know, that'll do it. And he, he, he does it, which, which there's a lot else there, of course, but yeah. still he falls in, gets, his, pow- yeah. gets his powers, and literally Oscorp's like, mm, that's liability. This person never exists. Burn the body. Mm. So he wakes up in a morgue, about to get incinerated, doesn't know what's going on, has his powers, goes out, wreaking habit by accident, because he's just walking around and things are going crazy. Spider-Man sees him. 
And the thing that blew me away about that scene, that just made me be like, this, these movies are very underrated, is when Spider-Man saw him, and he's like, who are you? Those going, and he's like, and he's like you, you held me, you saved me, a car's gonna hit me, you moved me out the way, I, 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 you picked up my blueprints, you sat on your eyes and ears, and then Spider-Man and me is like, oh, you're the blueprint guy. And I'm like, how, you remember this guy with all the shit you do? <laughs> so like, he remembered him and was like, you're the blueprint guy. Yeah, and he's like, okay, well, I know that you're, you know, you're going through some stuff, let's go somewhere quiet and talk and figure it out. And like, he's like, okay, I would like that. And he backs up, steps in a puddle, he short circuits, a sniper fucking shoots him, and then that's when everything just goes to shit. And I'm like, man, he was so close. Mm -hmm. He was so close. Because if there's anybody who could have talked him down and made him be okay, it was fucking Spider-Man because he loves him. Yeah, yeah. And ever since that, he was like, and what people don't realize is in that, in that movie, they did a good job of making it. So when he was getting electrically charged, his id, like his inner, like impulse personality mm -hmm. was like going crazy so it was like he lied to you he shot like, when you're like when he's like they lied to you they shot you they mm -hmm. tricked you they lied to you they shot you they they're just saying that over and over and over mm -hmm. so you see him starting to go mentally and i'm like man this is so tragic mm -hmm. that it's just a dude who was never seen never had anything was just the butt of everybody's jokes all this shit turned evil and it just shows you how easy it, it, it basically makes all the heroes in spider-man so much more valuable because you see how easy that change can be when you give somebody power. Gotcha. And then you take that person and then you look at the Jamie Foxx electro that's in No Way Home and it's like, yeah, what's his main thing? I want to stay here because I like who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That completely tracks with his character because he was a loser. Yeah, for He was sure. a loser and it wasn't just like he's a loser. He's a loser that was like to the max where like things are going wrong and the cops are shooting on him. Like one dude is like hands on the ground freak one of the cops and I'm mm. like, yeah, this completely makes sense. And even down, this is this is what blew my mind, even down to the fact that his electricity is yellow now, mm. the moment he got pulled is when at the end he's, uh, Peter is putting him back in the grid like he does, he, he like does, puts the electric shit together and then he's shocking him and the grid electricity in, in I mean, Spider-Man 2 was yellow. Hmm. So they could just be like, when he got absorbed into the grid and he got pulled into our dimension or to M the MCU dimension, that was after he absorbed the grid's power, which was yellow, which would make sense why he's yellow instead of blue now. Hmm. So I'm like, you guys just thought of it. You just yeah. thought of everything. Good job. Yeah, it definitely seems like that's that's cool to hear all that because mm -hmm. it definitely seems like Electro is the one that's. Kind of the most questionable, um, you know, as far uh, as that goes. Lizard's the most questionable. Yeah. I'm like, so what the lizard, fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> lizard's like the one that's like, but at the same time, like we already said too, it's like, what were they really going to be able to do with that character? And, I, and, and know, honestly, like, honestly, yeah. I kind of like that they just, because like, he's just a mad scientist. Yeah, it's fine. It's it, simple. Like, they, they, he just, he just wants to turn everybody, like, one of my, one of my favorite Spider-Man comic moments is there's this guy, I don't remember all the details, but there's a guy who can turn, he can mess with people's genetics. And he's turning them into dinosaurs. I think, I think I've seen this. And, yeah. and he, <laughs> like, I can cure cancer. Yeah, that's fine, man. So you can cure cancer, you can cure these diseases. And the guy just, and he's like a terror, that fucking pterodactyl. <laughs> and he's like, but I don't want to cure cancer. I want to turn people into dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, man? All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, like, what they did with the lizard, like, I think was about all they could do. Yeah. And, like, you know, and they, they kind of had some fun with him, too, because that's, like, that's what, I mean, yeah. like, even in the first Amazing Spider-Man movie, that's that's the one I've seen. I haven't fully mm -hmm. seen the second movie. Yeah, I would um, recommend the second one over the first one. Gotcha. The, the first, first one, yeah, yeah. Even the lizard in that movie was just, you know, he's one of those villains that they needed to do, and I'm yes. glad they did him. But at yeah. the same time, he as a villain in a movie is just kind of problematic because it's like, dude, yeah. he's a lizard. Like, well, honestly, they could have done a lot more with him if it's it's weird because a, the lizard I actually liked a lot because. When in the comics, when the lizard turns into the lizard, remember he's still like a, he's still a scientist. He's still a yeah, genius. Yeah, like, yeah. I know. I, so, I agree. In so, Amazing Spider-Man, they made him like a, a monster. Yeah. I, 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 my favorite part of the movie is when he comes out and he's got the lab. The lab coat. I'm yeah. like, yeah, like, yeah. Holy, and then it's like, oh fuck this. I'm like, yeah. Oh. But <laughs> honestly, the thing about it is like li the lizard's always experimenting on himself. Yeah. So when Spider-Man sees him, he has no idea what random genetic whatever he spliced himself with this time. Mm. It could be like, oh, now I have gills so I can fight you underwater and I can just be under there all the time. Mm. Or now I have this or now I have that. Like, yeah. he is like the world's leading geneticist. So it's like, it, it's not just like mini Hulk. Like, yeah. he is actually like a evil scientist that still is like lucid 
Gotcha. When he's a lizard. Yeah, no, I, I remember that too from the comics. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember him being basically, he's just, he's almost like a She-Hulk type character yeah. where he's like, I'm a monster, but I'm definitely still a scientist, yeah. so fuck you. And also like, <laughs> the fact that New York is just as much his city as it is Spider-Man's, where it's like, yeah, Spider-Man swings, but at any point, and I love mm. this in the comics, any point, he could just pop out of a manhole yeah. anywhere, and yeah. you're like, oh my god, and then yeah. that's it. Yeah, so it's it's more, it, the lizard itself is a bit of a shame on how he was handled mm-hmm. in the movies, but yeah. considering what they had to work with, exactly. they did have to bring him out of that universe, yeah. I think they, they did, they did great. Have. Um, and he, he had some kind of purpose where it's like, yeah, when you try to change people, it has consequences, which he would know, because yeah. that's his whole thing. His yeah. whole thing is, I'm trying to change people, and he, be- he genuinely believes he's trying to change them for the better. Right. So he's not that different from Peter in that regard, where he's like, you're trying to change us because you think you're trying to make us better, just like what I did, and I understand that has consequences, and you will learn that soon enough, and boy, did he. (laughs) Yes, he did. Boy, did he. And last film, before we move on, uh, Sandman, I I loved when he first showed up. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Dr. Tree. (laughs) Uh, Sandman, I loved when he first showed up Mm -hmm. that he was defending Peter. Yeah. Um, What do you mean you're not my Peter? Yeah, 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 exactly. (laughs) I love that. Um, you know, uh, Sam, man, I, I don't think there's a ton to talk about with him, but I, I like what they did with him. Yeah, I like how weird it. how it was with Thomas Hayden Church. I think they said it was a COVID thing. Mm. Um, cause you know, at the end, that shot is actually, uh, another shot from Spider-Man 3. He mm. actually wasn't on set. Uh, but he, that is his voice. Yeah. Uh, but I remember when we were seeing, I was like, I wonder if that's him mm-hmm. because they haven't shown him the whole time, but it was him. But for whatever reason, he and the lizard guy were not on set. So those last two shots you see of them the are actually up. alternate shots from mm. those movies. Um, but but yeah, I, I I really liked what they did with him um, and, and Doc Ock. I just, and I, and I, I love, love his motivation. I love he's like I just want to go home. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like fuck all yeah. this. Like yeah. I, I don't want this at all. Like mm. none. Um, so just just utterly fantastic. Um, as far as moving forward, I guess before we go into like any critiques, we gotta go ahead and bring up the fact. The other Spider Man, um, oh. you know, like so. So oh. th- this is another thing that just is just it falls in line with this whole movie, to where it's it's crazy that they brought these characters in and they were a major part of this mm-hmm. film. They were they were essential it wasn't a cameo, to this film. It wasn't a cameo. It yeah. Was like, they are characters for sure in this film, and, and and not only you know of course Andrew Garfield you know great uh, and he and he was so good in this mm-hmm. movie. I truly I, I think that. I think for him, you know, obviously the the most hype was Toby, but mm. I think with him it was almost better that he was in this movie because he really needed this closure. He did, yes. uh, and he needed this and, and I think that this movie demonstrated well that the movies that he was in, it was less of a problem with him and yeah. more of a problem with the writing. Yes. And um, and, and, and also know, and his portrayal. And also it wasn't even just purely the writing because it, apparently Mark Webb like he didn't have that much creative license mm-hmm. like he kind of had to just do what they told him and i'm yeah. like if you if you like my challenge everyone is just just go out and just watch the amazing spider-man movies you don't mm-hmm. have to watch all of them and if you have to watch one watch two you can watch two and never and not watch one in your app it, you do not miss much at all from one okay watch two and he he's st- like i i agree that he's kind of a he's a strange peter to see mm-hmm because, as I said in the last video, their whole thing was trying to slowly mold him into the Peter Parker we know yeah. by being like, look, when you're fast and loose and you act like an asshole like that, this is what happens. Yeah. When you try to be too cool for school because yeah. you have powers now, like this is the price you pay. And we were supposed to see that transition in the third movie. It didn't happen, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But I like that they finally gave us that, like, this is how he is after. And you can see that he kind of... He he kind of changed. Like, yeah, he changed totally. a good bit. Mm-hmm. So he kind of got he kind of got to do what he was supposed to do. And like the whole time he was Spider Man in those movies, he was great. Yeah, he's one yeah. of my favorite Spider Man. I not agree. Peter Parker Spider Man together, but just Spider Man. He was yeah. he was great. Yeah, I, I've said before I don't like his Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's once again it's less about him and more just the writing of mm-hmm. trail. I get that you know nerd culture has changed. I, I know mm-hmm. we talked about this briefly in the last yeah. video too, but I just I just thought he was too cool, yeah. like straight and, up. And and, and, I, and honestly like. Honestly, he kind of he kind of was, but like yeah. and even the comics, like the comics are heavily, heavily, heavily inspired by the Ultimate Universe. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much the Ultimate Universe, like the stuff with his dad, the stuff with Oscorp. You mean like, the Amazing Spider-Man movies? Amazing Spider-Man, okay. the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yeah, you know, yeah. the Amazing. Honestly, it should have been called Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because it's literally almost all of it is Ultimate Spider-Man. Right. Like it's very close, and that Peter is a little bit more cool. Like he is kind of like cocky. 
And they were trying to show that shift because the most unbelievable thing about the Spider-Man movies, especially the Raimi movies, which I love the Raimi movies, but the thing that never made sense to me is I'm like, look, if Peter Parker has powers and he's in this world where no one else has powers, he would not be, like, the fact that he's that good of a guy and that, like, grounded and like chill is pretty unbelievable like that's what makes him spider-man but it's 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 very very unbelievable that he's that grounded yeah and the reason why in the comics he's still grounded is because no one gives a fuck if you're spider-man when thor's walking around a literal god yeah you kidding me like and even even in terms of the things that he's good at like he's really smart right yeah you're smart you're not tony stark smart yeah or reed richards or reed richards yeah, so like yeah, yeah. because spider-man exists in the marvel comic book universe it automatically grounds him. Yeah, totally. So all these stories where he's just the only superhero doing super something, he would be a complete he's a god, asshole. essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. wouldn't be grounded. And like that's that's one thing they got right with Tom Holland very well. Is like, yeah, you see how like timid and like kind of meek he is because at any like he knows Tony, he knows Thor, he knows aliens, he knows celestials. Technically, if you count uh uh. Uh, Star Lord. He's mm. a half celestial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, whatever. Like, you know, all these crazy people. And it's like, yeah, no one gives a shit that you made your own web fluid. That's yeah. cool. Did <laughs> right. you make an arc reactor? No, you didn't. Yeah. Right? Like, so, like, that immediately grounds him. Yeah. And doesn't make him, like, because, like, that. If you gave anybody those powers, that's what would happen. He'd, right. be, he'd be like, I'm, I'm a fucking god. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. hell, think about people in this world that are just good at shit. Yeah. I'm the best. <laughs> I'm the best Guilty Gear player. They're gonna think they're hot shit. Yeah. They're just they just are. Yeah, like for I'm the sure. best Marvel Scandal player. Like be their own shit. Yeah. They're gonna think they're hot shit. But like yeah. I like that like that I think that's what people have to realize. Like, yeah, even though this is Spider Man, this is a different Spider Man living in a different universe with different rules. Totally. Like, like he is going to think he's the shit because there's no one to check him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you brought that up briefly in the, in the last video, and I under, I do get that completely. And and I and I in in even though I'm not super fond of those movies, mm-hmm. I I do see what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's interesting too. Well, we'll get into that with Tom yeah. Holland. Um, before we go into that, the Toby. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so oh. just just. Ah, like, like, dude, like, just, just. It's like seeing an old friend. I'm like, oh, there you are, man. Man, thank you, man. Like, I, I'm, you know, and once again, I'm just, I, I could not be more happy with the way that this happened. Just, you know, because they bring him in, and it's just, he's, it, he's still alive. He's here. I've just been doing my own thing Mm -hmm. in my own universe for quite some time. Let me tell you about it. Let me see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, I think there's a little less to talk about Toby than there is with Andrew. Mm-hmm. But because the story was pretty much done in three, for like, sure, they, they pretty much were like, yeah, that's it. They, they had that. They they had an opportunity to get that closure, right? Where Andrew didn't, right? But yeah. they still wrote Toby well enough to where it was like he, you could tell he was a, a confident man that that was really it was like you, like you said checking in on him. You know, it it was really like a thing where. He's been through the ringer. Mm-hmm. He's been through this. He knows he what was, he's done. He was older. Yeah. Experienced. That was... What that was, that was 616 Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Like, the regular Marvel comic Spider-Man. Yeah. S- getting to talk to, like, the younger, like, Miles yeah. Spider-Man. That's mm-hmm. what it felt like. It felt totally. like him being, like... It's like the mentor. Be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, gonna yeah, be okay. Sure. Like, th- let me give you some pointers. Yeah. Like, there's a run called Spider-Man where it's just... Li- it just Peter, or like the regular Marvel Universe Spider, or Marvel Comic Universe Spider-Man, interacting with Miles when Miles first started becoming Spider-Man in the mm-hmm. Ultimate Universe. And that's all it was. It was just him being like, hey, do these things, don't do these things, stay the fuck away from clones. Yeah. Don't let anybody clone you. Like, <laughs> that's kind of how it was in Spider-Verse, yeah, too. The exactly. Movie. You know, they, like with Peter B. Parker. Mm-hmm. Of course, it was a little different because he was chunkier and exactly. stuff like that. Let himself go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which, but, I mean, we've, we've been there, man. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but it just, I, I just, I loved it. I, and I love that, like, all, all the interactions with them were just mm-hmm. fantastic. I love the whole my back bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. you, know, you know, like, because that's it, a joke it, within a joke within a joke. It felt, and honestly, like, it felt like 
three brothers hanging yeah, out. Yeah, like it was crazy it how felt, well yeah. it worked. They, like, had, it, they had it, such good chemistry. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And it's also, I mean, I gotta say, man, you know, even though if you really looked, you could find it, it's kind of insane how well they kept that like under wraps. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it was a badly kept secret if you look for it, mm-hmm. but it's still, in my opinion, impressive that Sony just held off. They didn't mm-hmm. put them in any trailers. They mm-hmm. still haven't put them in any trailers. Mm-hmm. They're now still, you know, they're starting they're, to they're say. They're finally now. Fin- um, they're, they're, they're on a uh, marketing finally. Yeah. Oh shit! They're, I probably should have said the very beginning of this video. There's a lot of spoilers, but well, I, I, I mean, have to a, assume. That, it, 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 <laughs> you're talking about the. It, it, yeah, maybe I'll put a little title card or yeah. something just in case. Yeah. Um, but. Just just I, it was so fantastic, and and then and then of course you know Tom Holland in the end, it, mm-hmm. it, it's what to bring it back around to Andrew. Um, it's interesting because I, like I said, I get what they were trying to do with mm-hmm. his trilogy yeah. that unfortunately didn't come through. And if that third movie would have happened, we could have seen that fully Transition, formed. Yeah, but, so the the yeah. very cool part about this movie you is got to see it. You got to see it. The Homecoming trilogy is is good. I've always liked it. Um, and, and we can talk about this more later, but as we mentioned, there's always been something about it that's just a, a little mm-hmm. bit off, a yeah. little bit different. Um, and, and I really think that this movie was what was missing. Mm-hmm. Um, by the end of this movie, it's it's not even just the fact that he's on his own or anything. I think that he truly becomes Spider-Man yes. in this movie. He's not spider boy anymore. He's Spider-Man. Exactly. Because this, this is his origin story. These three movies is are his origin story. Because the thing is, like, and, and I and I t- totally agree with you with the whole, it was always missing, because I felt the same way. And I finally think I figured out, for me, what that thing was that was missing. Because the fact that Tom Holland, this, this the younger Spider-Man, when he first like became Spider Man, like right after Tony Stark came to him, and was like, "Hey, you're Spider Man. Here's some. Here's a new suit." Basically, he had Tony Stark as a mentor, yeah, right from the beginning. In his pocket. In his pocket. And then, then after that, it's like, look, I know your life has problems. You, you're a you superpowers. You got to juggle all the stuff. You're trying to juggle your two lives. But at any moment, you could call Stark Industries, and you're fine. Mm-hmm. Even after Endgame. If he called Pepper and was like, hey, Pepper, this thing happened with MIT, um, somebody that used to work for Stark Industries ruined my life, can you help me? You think Pepper would say no? She'd be like, yeah. all right, here's, fuck college, you work for Stark Industries now, we're going to give you your own lab. Yeah. You're getting paid to do, to do the thing, because obviously Peter Parker doesn't need to go to college. Yeah. If sure. he's making all this shit and like just a, a genius, yeah. that much of a genius... He doesn't need to go to MIT. He wants to go to MIT to mm-hmm. be with his friends. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, that yeah. is. Which that's fine. Mm-hmm. He, he should be able to do that. But like, it's it comes down to wants versus needs. Yeah. And this entire trilogy has been Peter Parking P- Peter Parker grappling. Pick, pick, Peter pick, Parker. Yeah, right. Pick, pick, pick. Peter Parker. <laughs> Peter Parker Spider Ham. Um, <laughs> but it's been him grappling with his wants versus his needs. Yeah. It's all of all almost all these movies have been. His wants. He yeah. wants to go to the dance with uh, what was her name? The the. I, you uh, know, I was thinking that too. What Liz? Liz. Was it Liz. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah he yeah. wants to go to the dance with Liz. Mm. Then he wants to have a special European, you know, romantic thing with MJ. Then mm. he wants to go to MIT, and it's like, yeah, man, like I get it. It's, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have wants, but like. Spider Man's about I need to get rent because I need yeah. to live here. I need to get a job. I yeah. need to do this. And he never he never really felt that before because one, he's still just a kid. Yeah. Like he's still in high school. And on top of that, he knew Tony Stark. And for them being like, Yeah, screw all that, he's back to square one. He's to the point where he doesn't even have any any col- or any high school records anymore because it's been wiped. So now he's studying for his GED, like all this yeah. stuff, it's like he is finally down to the bare bones. Okay, now when you're swinging around and you decide to skip out on work to save the kids in that burning building, of course you're going to do it because you're Spider-Man, but now it actually costs you something. Totally, yeah. Like, it, mm-hmm. it has a cost, and that's what, that's what like, even the same Raimi Spider-Man nailed because Peter Parker was, he was, Toby was struggling. Yeah, that whole, <laughs> yeah that especially whole, in two. Oh yeah, my God. that whole trilogy, he was struggling. Yeah. So every time he decided to do the right thing... Can't even get his door fixed, man. Right, that damn door. <laughs> <laughs> but, but every time he decided to, to do the right thing, it had a cost. Yeah. Right? And Tom Holland didn't really feel... I mean, he kind of felt it, but like... When you... That'd be like me just knowing Bill Gates. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Like, at any point, it's like, by the way, my... 
my my place got flooded. Oh, here's a new place. Here's a new high rise yeah. building. You own the whole thing. By the way, here's a couple million dollars just because I had it in my pocket just then. Like, yeah. you know, so like this really set the status quo for him to be the the Spider Man we have grown up with. Yeah, and I, I think it's important too to and everything you said is so right. I think it's important too to that it's not just as simple as like a memory wipe, you know, mm-hmm. like the stuff leading up in this movie, like there was, it, it's one thing if it was just like, Oh, you lost everything mm-hmm. back to square one. But the stuff that he went through in this movie, this is the first movie out of this trilogy where I felt like he had to make actual decisions mm-hmm. where it was like, you know, you know, when it comes to Aunt May, when it comes to MIT, you know, mm-hmm. the, this situation where he's starting to realize Spider-Man is affecting my life. It doesn't matter who I know at this point. Mm-hmm. It kind of does still. Like you said, yeah, he could probably have called Pepper or something. He could have. Um, this whole thing could have been completely nuked if he was just like, hey, Pepper, can you make this go away? And, I mean, and, and Strange even kind of brings that up. Yeah. It's like, you didn't even fucking call, you yeah. idiot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's because, like, yeah. Because, again, he's a kid. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we know, it's like, yeah, you could have called Pepper, you could have called anybody. Like, even Happy, like, Happy, why didn't you just... Call Pepper and be like, hey, like obviously Pepper knew, like she watched the watches the news. It's like, right. hey, can you do something? About, can you can you either like set him up with an internship at Stark Industries, no questions asked, and just let him do his thing, yeah, or like some something like, yeah, totally. You could have easily like, but I and I still think that like you know it, absolutely, but the way that they delve into his psyche in ways that are just unavoidable and and honestly primarily with the goblin mm-hmm. it, it's it's so fan because when it comes down to it is his aunt may has told him that the right thing to do is to save these people mm-hmm. he knows in his heart he believes the right thing to do he says he's to save these people but by saving these people it got aunt may killed mm-hmm. so but she still when she died he knows the right thing to do is still to save mm-hmm. them so that inherently puts him in such a spider-man place mm-hmm. that has not really been here in the home yeah. trilogy and before it's just been like you gotta beat the bad guy Go yeah ahead. just do it like do it and he probably the bad guy probably doesn't even have a beef with you he's got a beef with tony and mm-hmm. you know and you just happen to be here like, you know, this was like, you know, like, again, I, I can't be happier that they did it with the Goblin, mm-hmm. of all people, but I that trust that he gave these villains mm-hmm. just for them to turn back around, like, it doesn't matter how good of a motherfucker you are, mm-hmm. I'm still going to kill your aunt, motherfucker. And, and, and honestly, and, and that's the thing, too. And that's like, what Spider-Man is. It's yeah. like, sometimes you're going to do the right thing, and you're going to get shat on mm-hmm. for it. You are going to get shat on for yep. it, but you still did that right thing, and o- even if it's only you that knows it... That's what Spider-Man is. Yep. And I love that, that they carry that in with that memory thing to where I love that he his memory's gone, and we'll talk oh, about no, one more day. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Their memory's gone. We'll yeah. talk about one more day in a moment, yeah. too. But um, but the I love that he is still there. Mm-hmm. So he is bringing all this experience and mm-hmm. stuff with him that he has learned over the years, and he is now bringing it into this into what Spider-Man actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, and like what you said, like so it's gonna create whole, like, a really interesting Spider-Man. I yeah, think. especially when you're saying with the whole like him doing the right thing has consequences. Both both sides of that are true because remember Otto helped them a lot. Yeah, and the only reason he did that is because he was he, like, that's true. "You saved me," yeah. so like I'm gonna because Electro. Honestly, like I love Spider-Man to death. But whenever I see Electro, I'm like Spider-Man, you should lose this. Fight. Yeah, totally. My man, man this dude is <laughs> he's electricity. A, he is electricity. You sh- yeah, you should. <laughs> Yeah, like right through. He, like when he was just like, mm, and Andrew Garfield was just getting fucking fried. It's like, yeah, this yeah. should be a wrap. This yeah. should be KO right there. Yeah, you know, flawless victory, <laughs> hyper combo finish, level three super. Like you're done. <laughs> but but yeah, it's just it's so it's so interesting that they they kind of gave him kind of a penalty. It's like, yeah, we know your aunt died. We know you're sad that you kind of caused this, but it's not all for naught. No, you, yeah, for you, sure. You are still doing their thing, and, and I think Otto was the perfect person to personify that. Yeah, and, and that's a good point for sure. Is because yeah, you, he basically got both ends of the coin. You know, yeah. he got stabbed in the back by Green Goblin, but in the other end, he might not have won the fight if it wasn't for saving Otto. Exactly. I loved when Otto showed up at the end. I knew yeah. exactly what was going to happen, mm-hmm. and it made me very happy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I was worried at first. <laughs> I was worried at first because remember, him getting shot with electricity is what made the 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 arms go crazy in the first that's place. True. That's so true. So when I saw him, I was like, oh shit, did he reset the arms? Are the arms back now? And then he's like, sorry, I'm good. Like, oh, I, thank God. I had too thank much you. faith. I, yeah. like, I love that they did that because, you know, in the movie, of course, in the Sam Raimi movie, Otto is not a bad person. He's no. not a bad guy. Mm-hmm. It's just that the, the tentacles take over his head, so when you remove I mean, honestly, the tentacles... Honestly, most Spider-Man villains aren't just 
bad, bad. True, yeah, even, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even Norman, like, it's his yeah. other yeah. personality. Yeah, that right? gets amplified. Exactly, you know? with, with the uh, with the gas. For sure. So, so yeah, like, I think that was great. I think they did a great job. I The villains were just... The villains were... The villains played such a good role. And honestly, Marvel doing villains well in their movies is relatively new. Yeah, yeah, like, I agree. It, early Marvel in early Avengers time, besides Loki, yeah. that was basically it. And they were Loki, meat sacks. Yeah, and Loki, Loki was a good character. He wasn't really a good villain. Yeah, people true just that. people just liked him. Yeah, because he's so charismatic and he's so like he he's evil. But even when he's doing evil things, you don't really believe it. Yeah, you're like you're not really evil. You're just doing this because you're Loki. You're Loki. Like you're not really like. I, at any point, you could sit Loki down and talk to him and probably be like, all right, like, I get why. And they really, they did a great job of that in Loki. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's almost kind of oh. weird watching, like, Avengers 1 now yeah. and being like, Loki's the big bad guy right? here. <laughs> right, like, it's like, really? Like, Loki? Um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's so, uh, basically, like, this this trilogy now works. Mm-hmm. It now works. It, it this, this was something that they... They could have, but I, I like to believe that they had this planned out from the beginning. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I would say at least, at least far from home. Yeah, far yeah, from home, and they're yeah. like, yeah, you're you're setting all this up yeah. at this point. But it's just it makes it makes the entire trilogy make so much more sense to me, mm-hmm. and, and it makes it and like you said, yeah, it's just it brings Spider Man in, in what more badass way. To do it, then have the old guard the be real, like, yeah. like, you know, Give yeah. him the sign off. Yeah, line. like, and, and, and honestly, letting him start his own adventure. Yeah, it's the same thing they did with Miles. Yeah. Like, it's the, like, it is the same thing where they're like, we're going to have Miles start having his own stories, his own weight, his own character development. And to do that, we're going to make the Spider Man that everyone knows basically give him his blessing. Because, like, early on, people were really fucking pissed about Miles. And, yeah. like, they basically did it to be like, look, we don't care if you're pissed off. Peter Parker gave him his blessing, so screw yeah. whatever you think. Asshole. Right? So, like, <laughs> so like that, that was great. And like, it's kind of like we were like, yeah, we're going to basically usher you into the actual Spider-Man phase of your life. Yeah, for None sure. None of this little, I'm in high school, and no, no, no. I'm you're, basically rich as fuck. Yeah, right? no, no, none of this. You are Spider-Man now, yeah. and I love And when that. it comes down to it, it's just what we do. And yeah. you, you have to be able to do that. If you're not going to do that, then you're not Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And him making his decision in the end to continue to hold on to his, you know, and, and not affect Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. That's, and, and Ned and these them, that's yeah. Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's just, it's honestly just, it's so awesome. I, I, I really just, I don't know. It, it's so spectacular what they did. I, I feel like there's so many other things I could talk about that I'm probably missing. But, oh, it just, it's just, it, it's just so batshit insane to think that I remember going to see Far From Home when it came mm-hmm. out in theaters. It was my birthday and I met you at CeCe's Pizza afterwards. Yep, yep. Um, and I was like, I was like, one of my favorite parts of this entire movie, it actually made me a little emotional, was at the end seeing J.K. Simmons. Mm-hmm. And could you imagine that leading to this? Mm-hmm. Like, like just like a thinking like, holy shit, they brought it back from the Rami movies. That's incredible. There's no way you can cast someone better than, for J.J.J. Mm-hmm. than J.K. He is J.J.J. Mm-hmm. And and it's, it's so cool that they took that to heart and they're like, you know, you can't recast Green Goblin. You can't mm-hmm. recast Otto. Like, yeah, I don't think that was the sole reason why they did yeah. it this way. But, they, but knew, they knew the fans would eat this. They knew it would work. And they knew that if there's going to be a Green Goblin that needs to really drive this message home, it needs to be the mm-hmm. best one. And honestly, so, so here's the thing. Real quick before we move on to um, uh, One More Day. Yeah, yeah. So we'll end on that. But oh. The thing I really wish they... The two things I wish... And like, I feel like a spoiled brat for saying this. But <laughs> the, two, the two things I wish this movie were, would have done mm. were, one, I wish that we got animated Miles. Yeah, I, I know. I wish that at some oh. point... I, 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 I would have been fine with that actually being a cameo. Yeah. Like a really quick... Like just you like, just see swinging he, by. Yeah, or, like. or, or better yet, when all the things were in the sky, you see him just like go through a portal, zip, like he's like... Flying through like he is in the trailer for Spider Verse Two Part One. Yeah, like doing that like that That's like so he's great. like straight edge like kind of doing this. Yeah, he goes straight through and you see him just go through one portal and going into another portal. Yeah, like, what was that? And yeah. then when you look at it, it's my like that would have been so awesome. Yeah, I know man. that. And also, I would have loved <laughs> if one like they have a scene where everybody come out of their portal, the initial villains come out of their portals, and you see Amazing Spider Man Two Green Goblin coming out of the portal. 
and then you see a hand just greed grab him and pull him back, <laughs> and then Willem Dafoe comes out. I'll be like, I would have lost my own so yeah, bad. Yeah, man. But I mean, his his intro's still fine. But like that that would have been just a little, a little extra, a little extra yeah. razzle dazzle. Nice. I would have liked, you know. Yeah, but, for sure. But yeah, but the, but they did. It was perfect. It, I, it was I, it was so amazing. Yeah. I, I I mean, we're gonna go a little longer. We're already an hour, so we're probably gonna talk for at least like an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. We'll keep going here, but um, basically, the next. So before we get into one more day, mm-hmm. um, talk about any critiques we might have about the movie. Um, I've already went over one with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm I'm not super fond myself of the scene where uh, Toby gets stabbed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not. I don't really like it with emotional manipulation. Mm-hmm. I I feel like that scene was a bit manipulative. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just feel, it, and not really, in, in manipulative, I also feel like it was just kind of unnecessary. Yeah, it, like was, it, it, was, it was like the John Wick scene. Yeah, and well, yeah. I mean, know, re- yeah. really, it, it, was, it, was them, it was them doing something that they knew would get a certain reaction exactly. out of you. And it was, it was easy. And I, yeah. and I get it. I totally understand. Now, the that, only yeah. thing that now would make that scene A-OK in my book is I love the idea that maybe we're not done with Toby. Mm-hmm. Maybe there, maybe he's still gonna exist in this universe oh, in some way. So, um, so one of my pipe dreams or fever dreams, not pipe dreams, but fever dreams <laughs> is I would love if there is a Spider-Man show on Disney Plus that is just Andrew Garfield, and it's just <laughs> and it's just called like Ultimate Spider-Man, and it's his what happened after two and after he came back from. Tom Holland's universe yeah. and showing him just like being an alternate Spider-Man in this universe. So it was going to have Toby show up like that having it. I mean, and honestly you can make it animated. I'd be, I mean, cause that's a big mm. budget yeah. getting, getting yeah. Andrew Arthur for a whole show to be pretty, you know, I mean, have him voice it or something, but like to see that story continued in some capacity. Yeah. So you can actually have a live action ultimate Spider-Man Thing, and who knows? You can pull people. Like, what if all of a sudden there's a Tony Stark in the universe now? Yeah. What if there's a right. Hulk in the universe? Right. right. Like, and then you can start having them start like, oh yeah, Ultimate Tony came by in a big like the next Endgame event. You can have a portal open up and like the Ultimate Universe heroes come through. Right. Yeah. 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 That For would sure. be. I would love For that. sure. Or even like like with Toby, it could be a situation where like this stab leads to something. I brought up the idea of like. Maybe in his own universe in a future movie, this stab is what leads them to be like, you know what, I gotta hang it up. Like, mm-hmm. this is my last big hit, I gotta hang it up. And then that could potentially lead to him and Chris and Dunst's kid, if they have one, you know, Mayday or Mayday, whatever, yeah. you know, become a in that Because in that comic series, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, in, in, in that situation, like, I would be a okay with it. it as it stands right now. Not super fond of the scene, but it's not a big deal yeah. at all. I just feel like it's. I feel like yeah. it's emotionally manipulative. I agree, and um, honestly, like the thing is to like. In terms of what the scene is fundamentally, I totally agree. Like it, it is very manipulative, but at the end of the day, like that's that's movies, man. Like, and for movie, sure, movies are pretty and, much and, and, all. You know. Especially seeing it again, Goblin does you know use it. He's trying to basically taunt Peter at that yeah. point and stuff like that. And also, um, I, th- I think it shows like how much Goblin is hyper focusing on Tom Holland because like the fact that he stabbed like his Spider Man mm-hmm. and didn't even you realize he didn't even say anything to Peter. Yeah. He didn't say shit. He was like, boom, get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> like, that's basically what he did. He was like, oh, yeah. get out of here. I'm talking yeah. to this kid. Because he knows Tom, or Tom McGuire's a lost cause. Yeah, he wants to ruin Tom. He wants to affect him in a yeah. way that he can't affect Andrew Garfield or totally. Tom McGuire. I, I agree. Which, which which makes sense. You I know? agree. For and that, sure. that, that's totally on brand for Green Goblin. Green Goblin is not a blunt force kind of person. He's very... Very manipulative. Psychological. His he, whole yeah. thing is he he doesn't want to kill you. He wants to destroy you. Yeah, he wants you to wish you were dead. Yes, he like, wants to, he wants he wants to change who you are fundamentally. Yeah, absolutely. That's who he wants. He wants you want. to become a goblin. Yeah, essentially, really. Right? He like, wants it, misery loves company. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's hobgoblin. Yeah, a hobgoblin's a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like I I I I like with it, and like there's there's a lot of debate about spider sense, and I'm like, you can't have spider sense in movies. Like, yeah. like you know how you. Pete, he should never be hit by anything. The only thing that is consistent with Spider Sense is very strong emotions will overwrite his Spider Sense. Yeah. Which I could see. I mean, they had a real, like, when he was looking at Tom Holland and he was like, he was basically like, 
telepathically being like, mm. dude, you know, like man, that, he said that was so incredible. much with his eyes. That 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 little that shot of oh. Toby is unbelievable. Yeah. You, you can hear him just talking. Yeah, you can literally like, just hear can, him. You talking. can hear you can hear, you can hear him being like, "This isn't what." Yeah, we're doing. this is what we do. You need to put it down right yeah. now. Yeah, Don't and like, do it, man. and like, so I can I can see that because incredible cause, actor because there has been a lot of times where like people have used Peter's emotion to get around the spider sense. And that's why most of his really, really good villains are as quick-witted as he is. Mm-hmm. Because they have to do, like... I remember there was one time when literally Black Cat was trying to get away from Peter. Mm. And, like, she had this dumb thing. She still pisses Black Cat. She always still shit. And, <laughs> and uh, she's... He's like, Black Cat, like, come on. Like, I can easily catch you. I'm Spider-Man. And she's like, which... I'm like, Peter, you're awfully... Black Cat's ridiculous. I wouldn't... <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't just casually say you can stop her. And it, literally... Yeah. She's like, you're right. You always catch me. You always do. So I think that brings me to what I'm about to say. And she gets down on one knee and pulls out her ring and is like, will you marry me? And he's like, what? what? And then right when he does it, she just slashes his leg. And he's like, ah, my leg. And, he's on the <laughs> and then he just, and she just leaves. And, she, and she's like, man, it's really a bitch to get around that spider sense, but I finally know how to do it. And, and Peter's on the ground like, my leg, my feelings. <laughs> and I'm like, so it's pretty much established that if you have something like, strong enough to like mm. hijack his emotions yeah you can get around it which makes sense yeah you know? and that does make sense in spider sense yeah it's yeah it's really it's walky to it's write yeah hell. it is he should it, never it, get it hit totally. by anything it's basically up to the writer mm-hmm. and now i will say that i do believe that the homecoming series has been kind of inconsistent with mm-hmm. the way they've handled it and i feel like that that makes that scene a little more questionable to mm-hmm. me. Like, in the Sam Raimi stuff, you're totally right about just general. But I feel like, it's, I don't know. I feel like it's contextualized better in Sam yeah. Raimi. Like, you kind of know, like, you know, it's got that weird zoom out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, you kind of, I don't know. I feel like, basically with Spider-Sense, is the writer has to establish yes. the rules. And yes. I feel like in the Raimi series, I, they establish those rules a little bit better. But who knows? I mean, they're not in the Raimi universe anymore. They were in his. Yeah. So Because no one knows... Why he can do that? For sure. Like they, 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 Spider Sense is so weird. Like he basically just has temporary situational omniscience. Yeah. That's the only way you can justify that because he knows about things he has no business knowing when he's using the Spider Sense. Right, right. Right. He can't use sound. He can't. Use, it's not he's Daredevil. Right. Yeah. Like he, he, he's not using his environments because there's sometimes he will dodge things. Like people will be literally popping into existence mm-hmm. in his dimension he'll be dodging I'm like you how would you have yeah no <laughs> so like it's, it's one of those things where you just got to be like i comics i guess totally, like, absolutely. That's, that's it so but, yeah but still i agree it was i think it was their way to kind of make you go <gasps> one oh last yeah time. and the whole and the whole audience you know yeah. of course you, you hate seeing toby get stabbed I mean, as but... soon as as soon as as soon as you see the rule of thumb in any comic book superhero sci-fi adventure movie when the main, when one of the main characters is looking at the camera and his back is to a villain <laughs> for more than like fifteen seconds, the fucker's getting stabbed. Right. And, 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 <laughs> I want to clarify too that I don't have a problem with them stabbing Toby. Yeah, yeah, it's just the way they did. Like if anything, like if this is the last time we see Toby, I almost even kind of wish they would have had the balls just to maybe even kill him. Well, they or don't like wanna, they don't want to write him off, especially with, yeah. especially with how how nuts this movie did. Yeah. They're going to be like, we're keeping as many doors open as possible. And when I really think about it, I don't know if I want to see Toby die anyway. So, yeah. like, you know, so, so yeah. But I don't, I don't want him to, I, I don't want him to see him one more time if he dies. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Give him one more, like, I'm like, I am the the spider man. Yeah, show him kick someone's ass. Right. Like, go down swinging. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Literally sure. swinging. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and, and really the... Uh, only other thing, it's less of a critique and more of just kind of an interesting thought. I'm sure you've thought about this as well. Um, with the way that some of the villains were brought in, mm-hmm. when they go back, particularly Doc Ock, I don't mm-hmm. know if you heard the line when he's like, you know, when I, I was, the oh, last thing I remember is I had my, my tentacles around his neck and I was about to kill him. So if what he's saying is true, mm-hmm. then he was brought into Tom Holland's universe right before um, uh, Toby changed him in his. It's right but when the, his... When he's got having that fight out mm-hmm. uh, near the arc reactor, yeah. So what if what he's saying is true? Then when he sends him back, he's still gonna die because he's still fighting. He's he's in that fight, and but he's only, not changed anymore. But the only option still he remember in that moment mm-hmm. in Spider Man Two, he was like, "The only thing I can do that we're out of time. I have to kill this myself. It's mm-hmm. the only option we have." Well, we don't know when they get put back. That's right? true. We don't know where Strange put them in their time. Because that, that gets really confusing because 
and especially in the Andrew Garfield and the Mark Webb universe, the Amazing Spider-Man universe, they were all pulled from different times. Mm -hmm. So it's like, do they get put right back where they were? Like, do yeah. they get put like we don't know. Right. It's like it's yeah. kind of hard to say mm -hmm. like when we're it's it's a it's an interesting thought, you know, like cuz if it's, that is what happens, that's really sad. Yeah. And, also, <laughs> and also like Here's the thing too, it's like where does Peter go? Yeah. True. Does he In go? which point does Peter go back? Cuz cuz him and Goblin obviously came from two different timelines cuz Goblin came from when he was still he was Spider-Man 1. Spider-Man 1, whereas Toby came from well past Spider-Man 3. So exactly. So it's like, where do where right. do, where do they go back? We, like they're technically the same timeline, but they're also different. But yeah. what, what we could say that explains all of this is Loki. They're just variants now. That's true as they well. They just got put back into their timeline, but there it's a variant timeline now. And that was about the only other one I was uh, too is, is the interesting thing you um, brought up Electro earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't know a ton about Spider Man Two, mm -hmm. uh, Amazing Spider Man Two, mm -hmm. but from what I've heard, Electro doesn't actually know. Spider Man's Peter Parker in that movie. He he so he does he probably doesn't know that he's Peter Parker, but he does hear the name Peter. When they're fighting in the power plant, Gwen says Peter. She mm -hmm. screams Peter. So at the very least, he knows Spider Man is somebody named Peter. Okay. okay. Which I mean, if he I mean, the internet exists. You know how easy it would be to just be like, Well, his I know Spider Man's name is Peter. He hangs out with Gwen all the time. I know who Gwen is. At that point, it's a couple of Facebook searches, and you you, you know That's who he is. That's true. So like, but you remember in the movie itself, at the end, when mm -hmm. Andrew Garfield takes off his mask, mm -hmm. he's like, he, "Well, it's a great interview." Oh yeah, it's, I, love, right. I love but, it. But, yeah. But that's what I'm, but so so two things about that. One, he he knows that his name's Peter. He just doesn't know what he looks like because mm -hmm. the spell was everybody who knows Spider Man is Peter Parker. So they could you could extrapolate that and say, okay, he knew that Spider Man is Peter. He doesn't know. What he looks like, he yeah. just knows that he is Peter. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, shout out for my man Electro for thinking that Gwen got with like it's like good. How progressive of you! Good, good <laughs> job, man. Like, good job, like my, my man. Good job, Jimmy Fox. I love that exchange. Right? I love that Andrew Garfield apologizes for. Yeah, I'm so, oh, he's yeah. Like, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, he has to basically name drop Miles. Yeah, and, and then like, Miles I'm, doesn't I'm show up. I'm sure there's a Black Spider-Man out there like, somewhere. Uh, I'm like, I'm I guess like, he is. You, you sons of bitches. I know, and that's when they could have showed him. Just have it oh, like, come and on. And it would have been so cool if he was just straight up animated. Yeah. Like, I don't want him to, I don't want to, I don't cast him yet. Yeah. Just, I want animated Miles. I want an amazing, or I want an Spider-Verse uh, 2 Part 1. I want to see Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland. Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire. Yeah, I want, or better yet, I'd love to see Miles. I love, I would love to see, make that how they announce the live action Miles because I would want him to go to a universe where it is live action and he takes off his mask and he's an actual person. Damn, that would be dope. That would be awesome. That would be, dope. <laughs> and then the movie could just end and then later on you see Miles be introduced in MCU. Peter's mentoring and blah blah blah. Yeah. Oh. Dude, I'm oh. so fucking excited for Spider Verse too. I mean, that's yeah. a whole another video, yeah. but oh, oh yeah. my god, that, was, that trailer. Oh! Yep. Um, but From yeah, 2099, my boy. Oh Man, yeah. I was like, woof. <laughs> woof. God, it looks so clean. And also, I think it's so cute that like they're really playing up this Spider or this this Miles and Gwen thing, where like he's like, "This is is this your drawing book?" And like she opens it, and it's like all these pictures are her. Yeah. And yeah, she just yeah, doesn't yeah, say yeah. anything. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Man, all right, cool. So we're at about, let's see, an hour and 12. Yeah. If you're still listening to this, awesome. You all must right. really love Spider-Man as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about One More Day and yeah, start yeah, wrapping up a little bit. So, so yeah, One More Day, like, pretty much regarded one of the worst Spider-Man stories. Uh, back in the day, uh, when Gwen died in the comics, people were kind of jarred. Because back then, people didn't really die in comics like that. Mm -hmm. Especially love interest. That's still a huge death in yeah. comics. Like, yeah, yeah. So people were kind of upset about that, but at least in that, they were cool with it because that taught Peter how to be a better hero, mm -hmm. right? It kind, of, it kind of, he learned from that event and it developed him as a character. Yeah, momentous. Exactly. And in, in One More Day, uh, Mephisto, you know, the devil of, or one of the devils of Marvel Comics, right. he, um, he essentially bargains... For Aunt May's life, because the event in the events of Civil War, Peter Parker comes out as Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I think Kingpin. Kingpin orders a hit on Spider Man. The uh, the Hitman fucks up and hits Aunt May. Mm-hmm. So it's a hospital. Peter whoops that dude's ass. <laughs> like he whoops his ass. He even goes to prison, finds Kingpin, strips down. Like shows his face, takes his shirt off, and he just has pants on, whoops Kingpin's ass in front of everybody. He <laughs> breaks into jail to whoop Kingpin's ass, shows everyone, like, has Kingpin by the throat, has his web shooters by his mouth, and it's like, if I pull this button, my web shooters go down your throat, they solidify, and it takes an hour for them to stop. So you, I don't think you can hold your breath for an hour. So I own, <laughs> I own you right now. And he's like, any of you, have you seen this? Anybody who fucks with my family... You're dead. And he just leaves. And I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, like, so he, so, uh, Aunt May's in, in a, in a, in, hosp- in the hospital. Tony, him and Tony fight. Uh, Tony realizes, I guess, kind of fucked up that you came out of Spider-Man and Aunt May's dying for it, blah, blah, blah. He pays for Aunt May's medical bills. Oh, so this is after Civil War? It's after Civil War. Huh. Yeah. I thought it was uh, earlier, so, and, okay. And he, uh, after that, he, uh, it turns out that Aunt May, even though she's on, like, she has, you know, pretty much his limited money at that point yeah. in the hospital. She's still like, they're like, she's never going to wake up. Like, she's just going to be in a coma forever, blah, blah, blah. And Mephisto comes to Peter and is like, look, I'll bring back Aunt May, but I want something of yours. And Peter assumes he wants his soul. Mm-hmm. So he's like, okay, let's do the whole soul thing. He's like, no, 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 no. I don't want your soul. I want something better. And then I want your marriage. And it turns out that he was given the same deal to MJ. And then they meet and they're like, yeah, I guess we got to do this. We got to save Aunt May. So. And it's really cool because there's this, like, girl that's, like, guiding Peter from this, like, through this, like, weird metaphysical trip that's, like, him going through all this shit. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, seeing a bunch of, like, alternate versions of himself. And when they make the deal to get you to have our marriage, the girl starts fading away and you find out that that girl was Mayday. Mm. And it's like, because you guys are never married, I never exist. And she just fades away and I'm like, oh, that that, that sucks. And then Peter wakes up and it's like, he never even knew MJ. They were never married. And I was like, but then where's the cost then? Like, I get that we as the readers feel the cost, mm-hmm. but he's not learning anything or getting anything from this tragedy. His his character's not developing at all. It's just like, yeah, we just, you know, we just changed it. Yeah. And that's it. And it's like, okay, well, that it, it just trivialized their entire marriage. And and you not know? to go too much into it, but do they they have a reason a, a good reason why Mephisto even wants their marriage? Because apparently it was like really pure or something. Like, you know, how Mephisto is Mephisto. Mephisto was like the anguish this will cause. It was kind of weird because the anguish this will cause, I can feed off of it for okay. a long time. That makes but at the same time, I'm like, but what anguish? Because he doesn't remember. Yeah. So like, true. what what do you what? Unless he's just being a dick, which Mephesto is a dick. Yeah. But still, I'm like, what? So, yeah, it was weird. People didn't like it. But I just got to give them so much props to taking that yeah. and spinning it in the movie to make it make so much more sense. Just, for, just by the simple fact that at the end, Peter remembers everything. Yeah. And that completely Absolutely. changes the context of it. Absolutely. I, I was so worried when I when this movie was wrapping up mm-hmm. and when Strange was you know, he's basically saying, like, just do it. I'm like, dude, are we really about to be like this was all a dream type thing? Mm-hmm. Like, it, like, if this is about to happen where it's basically like, blink, this is all over... But the way they handle it mm-hmm. is awesome. I, I love that basically he is now in in like a Sam Raimi type place. Mm-hmm. But he has, well, once again, all of this experience, all of this stuff, all of this stuff mm-hmm. he's brought. He's grown so much. Mm-hmm. But he's just reset. So it's almost like people can come up to him and be like, you know, say like... Um, Hey, you remember when the Avengers fought Thanos? He's like, yeah, I remember. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, 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 I remember, but I can't. Can't say anything. Nobody even fucking like that's in a way well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Well, they they know that Sp- Spider Man. Even Aunt May's grave. Sorry, it's just like yeah. I, that. That was a good scene. Mm-hmm. I love coming up and, and when you hear Happy, the first line he says is like, "How do how'd you know her?" It's like, mm-hmm. damn, mm-hmm. oof, that's yeah. brutal, man. And that's the thing too. Like, remember, Spider Man still exists. Mm-hmm. Everything that Peter did as Spider Man still happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, just yeah. that. No one knows. Like, so basically, you just have to assume every time you saw Peter, he didn't take his mask off. Yeah. And no one knew. And probably, probably, you could probably say the only person that knew was Tony, maybe. Yeah. Because, of course, he would know because he found him. But yeah. Like, and he literally went to his 
house, but Tony's dead, so... Yeah, so if you, you could, really want to break it down, that spell is crazy. It's yeah. like, yeah, oh, yeah, the spell, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not just memories, it's, 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 it's changing, it's wiping memories, and it's changing reality to fit those wiped memories. Yeah. Because if you think about it, all that television footage. Right, that's what all, I'm wondering about. Everything, stuff like that. all the pictures. Like legal documents and stuff. That's, like why, that's, that's why he had to get his GED. GED exactly. Because yeah, he, yeah. He, he doesn't exist in the school system anymore. Right, yeah, yeah. So it's it's literally changing things to retell the narrative of the MCU as we've seen so up to this point, where Peter still did all the things. Mm-hmm. It's just. He didn't miss Spider Man. He didn't miss Spider Man. And no one knew somehow. No one knew. Maybe just out of respect, I guess. Yeah. They just respect him enough to be like, okay, we're just gonna let you not. We're gonna not fuck with you and just let you do your thing because yeah. you're not doing anything wrong. You're being a hero. So like, we'll just respect. They probably they probably knew he was a kid. They probably knew he was young. And they probably knew that he's from from New York. Tony probably knew who he was. Tony probably did never said anything to anybody because he just wanted to let him. Especially with all the shit going on with in Civil War about mm-hmm. the. Uh, Registration, the Sokovia Accords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He probably was like, "I'm not gonna tell people who Spider-Man is because if I did that, the government would be on his ass." Yeah, true. So he probably was just like, "Okay, you're Spider-Man. That all the documents will be you as Spider-Man, mm-hmm. all that stuff." Right. Which probably explains why now he can't use any of his old suits. Yeah, and I think that honestly, that along with the stuff we talked about with the Home Trilogy, I think just that part of it too is always kind of weird to me, where it's just like he was. Right out the gate, he was Spider Man and Peter Parker. Like uh, he was always had his mask off. He was always just like he was. He was more Peter Parker, honestly, throughout this trilogy, in my opinion, than Spider Man because mm-hmm. his face was just always oh, there. Yeah. Like like his mask didn't really matter that mm-hmm. much. So now it's now he's he has to live that double life. Mm-hmm. He can't just be like I'm here. Like what's up? Mm-hmm. I, I think that's so important. And one of my favorite moments. Um, is, you know, when all the Spider-Men are, are about to come together and really sync up, and he's like, you know, I was part of the Avengers, and Toby's like, that's great! What is that? Hey, like, how is this helping? And see, that, that also proves that in their world, they don't have, there's no other right. superhero stuff. That's great, and, and, and it mm-hmm. really leads to Tom Hall and Spider-Man potentially having the most strengths of any mm-hmm. Spider-Man because he now is in a position where he really has to learn how to be truly be Spider-Man, but he once again has all this experience, mm-hmm. uh, this team experience that he can bring in. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why they were able to succeed is because he's like, look, guys, I worked as a team. I know y'all fucking didn't, but I have. So mm-hmm. let me kind of tell you what's going on. I love the part when they swing and like they swing onto, I think it's, Tobey Maguire and he swings them yes. both. Like, oh, yeah. that was so. Dope. I watched that scene on YouTube so many that fucking times. So there's like there in, in in that you know there's that shot where they land on the statue. It's incredible. But each one of their swings is a little distinct. Like I love that the, the uh, Toby's the first one you see. He's got that very distinct like pull down like swing mm-hmm. from like this. It's like oh like I love that mm-hmm. so good. Yeah, it was so do that. Um, but it, you're absolutely right. The fact that he keeps his memories and the mm-hmm. fact that what he chooses to to act on that. Mm-hmm. It really just it, it's crazy that they took the risk on this story that's very very divisive and they really made it something special oh absolutely they really really made it something special so so before we before we finish up where do you where would you want this to go like spider-man yeah whatever the next one is what do you want this next movie to be Dude, i know i was i was thinking like because definitely want to talk about the future in more deep we might even have to make another video closer to like strange mm-hmm. um but what i would like for spider well, for, for man specific, not for MCU, Spi- yeah for spider man man not i know anymore, i know it, it's kind of hard because you know on one hand i'm so excited where he's at mm-hmm. but on the other hand I, you know you don't want to retread you don't want to basically just do the sam Raimi movies again i i remember um you brought up the idea i do think that this is the perfect time for him to get involved in the symbiote mm-hmm. um and, and because I, he's vulnerable now. obviously you know with the credit scene too they make that uh they make that a factor mm-hmm. um absolutely he's in a really dark place right now mm-hmm. even though he's he's probably stronger than he's ever been yeah, but he's still alone he's he's alone and he's in a very dark that. place yeah. absolutely um so while i'm not sure if that's exactly what I want. Mm-hmm. I do think that that would be a very smart direction to take him. I agree with that. I would also like, I'd like the symbiote to happen next, and I would like him to get introduced to the Fantastic Four. Okay. That would be dope. I would oh, love, yeah. I would love if they set it up to where Peter gets his GED. And remember, he's still a fucking genius. So yeah. you still get to whatever college he wants. Right, 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 right. He could just be like, I had some family shit going on. I couldn't really go to high school that much, but I'm really smart. 
and yada yada yada. He mm-hmm. could get to some crazy New York school. Reed Richards could be the Fantastic Four could be there. Mm-hmm. He could essentially be like Reed could be like, "You work for me now. I see how smart you are." Right. He finds out that he's Spider Man somehow because it's Reed. Yeah. Like if anybody's gonna just figure out it's Reed. Right. And then you could even have like him being in a dorm, and his dorm mate is Johnny. <laughs> that, that would be, cool. be dope. Uh, yeah, that would be really. That, would be yeah, that could be a very smooth friends. way of. They were friends in the comics, and also consider. I mean, this yeah, the conversation about the future of the MCU. I think we'll have to wait for another time. But just briefly, like this also does really give them a big starting because you know since Disney has now got mm-hmm. so much more to work with, mm-hmm. this Defend- really Fantastic Four is coming. Yeah, this yeah. this gives them a better opportunity because essentially reality has changed, mm-hmm. so they can kind of say. You know, because because it's kind of weird. It's like where have these characters always been? I mean, They're gonna have to figure that. Multiverse out. Multiverse of Man is probably gonna yeah, probably do all that. Um, but or the, Quantumanium. One one of them are gonna do something because Quantumanium with Ant Man three is gonna be like it's probably gonna have Kang. Like, yeah. Or it is gonna have Kang, but it's probably gonna do some kind of weird time stuff because yeah, you know that's what Kang does. But I would I, honestly with Quantumanium. I love if this is another thing, but I want to see TVA in Quantum. Because it's oh. the all-time shit in Kang. Yeah, right? yeah. But anyways, I would love if they were just like, Fantastic Four is a thing now. They don't have to be the Fantastic Four yet. They can just be like, I'm Reed Richards. This is the Baxter building. Yeah. Uh, we're really smart. I'm, I'm like a GM, like the next Tony Stark, basically. Yeah. Like, Peter's kind of like, mm, all right. And he, they, he's like, oh, you're a pretty cool guy. He talks. He meets Sue. He meets, you know, Ben. He meets Johnny. Mm-hmm. Maybe him and Johnny are roommates. Like, they could talk. Like, honestly, he could just meet Johnny. And they can kind of hit it off. Yeah. And they could be friends. And then when the Fantastic Four movie happens, when they get their powers, then it's kind of like, oh, you have powers now. You're a, you know, like that. They could really play with that a lot. Absolutely. So And, like, that's a huge phase of Spider-Man's career where he's kind of just working with the Fantastic Four. Yeah, totally. So that'd be cool if they just kind of, kind of slide that in and it'd be great because... Everybody knows if you have the Fantastic Four, you know who's coming yeah, soon. I, I didn't even you want to say. I don't even want to say. Soon. I don't even want to say his name because oh. that, like, if I start talking about him, we're gonna go on. Yep. No. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, 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 oh, uh, you uh. mean our Lord and Savior? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. Man. I can't. I can't. <laughs> like I, I can't. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I, I, I love I you know, yeah, as far as what I actually want, it's hard. I would I would love I know they're making a movie with him uh, already, but mm-hmm. I would I do also think it would be a great opportunity for Craven. Um mm-hmm. for him to show up oh, he and was just start in the, fucking hunting. He was in the uh he was in the sky. Uh oh, oh was he one of the guys? I didn't I didn't. It was Craven, it was a classic Mysterio, it was a Scorpion. And I, I, there were a lot, but there were a bunch of other but the ones okay. I saw for sure were so definitely a, a, like a classic scorpion, like yeah. the old tail. Yeah. It's craving there's a dude holding a spear and has like the fur. Oh, yeah, I did see the guy with the spear. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking that was like a eternal or ele- or a celestial yeah. or something. The only reason I say because he, because he had the, he had the fur. Fur. Like the yeah. Fur I know they're making a craven movie, but I. I don't, is that still happening? I think so. Because they were saying the same thing with Black. Cat and uh, Silver Sable, and I don't think that's happening. I anymore. think Craven's still happening. I, I, I actually think what's his face, uh, Kick Ass Kid was cast as Craven. Yeah, he Aaron was. Tyler, a- mm-hmm. Aaron Taylor. Yeah, I think there was. Being Quicksilver. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, um, but but yeah, like I, I really like the idea of like basically Peter trying to figure himself out, mm-hmm. and you know, well, not he kind of just figured it out, but he figured out his new life, and yeah, figure out the new status, and then all of a sudden, like this motherfucker just hunting him. Like, dude, like, I'm trying, what the hell? Like, yeah. that would be a very honestly, scary place. Honestly, like, I think it's, I forgot what it was called, but it's like Craven's Last Hunt. Last or Hunt, something. definitely. That is I, one of yeah. the that, I, that darkest was, Spider-Man stories fucking ever. That was one of the comics I actually had mm-hmm. um, a couple of the stories together. Mm-hmm. I don't remember, I think I actually bought some of those myself. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, my uncle had given me some, and then I liked the story so much that I think I bought a couple. Mm-hmm. And I haven't read it in forever, but I just remember loving it. Mm-hmm. I oh. absolutely loving it. Also, Daredevil. That'd be a great, yeah. like, I just, I think holy be, shit. Like, yeah, we Daredevil. crossed over the fact that fucking Charlie Cox yeah. is in this movie. Just, and he was there, though. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I'm a very good lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, so you, awesome. you can have, it, it could be, it could be Kingpin. Yeah. It could be Daredevil. You could have that whole, like, really gritty street level. Because, like, yeah. there are, like, totally. Moon Knight, Daredevil, yeah, especially all with these Moon Knight people. Coming, they could be setting up for that. They could be setting up, a, a like, a Hell's Kitchen, like. That'd be cool. Oh, like, that'd be great, too. Because, like, yeah. again, like. Having having Tom Holland do all these phantasmal, I was in space. Like they were even like you were in, you fought an alien 
in space. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like it's, I'm lame. I fought like right over. Right? <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, and it's like, yeah, like he went from all this crazy shit, which is very golden age. Yeah, yeah, totally. So like, this is kind of like the MCU as it is now, or as it was, was kind of like the golden age. Like some crazy shit was happening, mm-hmm. and like I would kind of like it. If this next phase is like a silver age, more like grounded, gritty, like, yeah. for Spider-Man. Like, I mean, we still got Doctor Strange doing Doctor Strange shit, you know, yeah. but, like, having it be, like, I am, I'm just fucking with the Kingpin. Yeah. I, That's I, all I, it is. I'm I, just trying to, I agree. I'm just trying to mess with the Kingpin. And you can, you can have some crazy, you can have some, and in Fantastic Four is, you know, literally fantastical, but, like, still, like, it'd be cool to see him have to struggle with more human people. Yeah. Humanized. No, I, mean, I agree. You know, which, and, and not, not counting his movies, because The Vulture was well done. Yeah, Mysterio for was super sure. well done. For but, like, sure. all his Avengers shit is like, you're doing what? You're in space fighting a purple Grimace looking <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> with rocks? <laughs> like, like, no, man. Like, you're Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I, there, there's a lot of options right now, mm. but those are, I definitely think, I, I like the idea of a street level gritty story. Because I, I, I bring up Craven, I feel like he could do that mm. well, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially um, with how they spin it, because they could easily, they could easily, especially with like Marvel, with the cinematic news where it is, they can easily bleed Craven into some kind of Black Panther shit. Yeah, easy, totally. Easy. Oh, They're like, yeah, by the sure. way, he was an ex hunter, military, whatever, and he got his hands on some crazy vibranium Michael Condon tech, and yeah. and then sure he can pop up and be like, yo, that's ours, like. And, he, and they, they can do whatever they want now. Totally. Like the, it is the Wild West. Yeah, now, for sure. You know, so. For sure. Yeah, man. Um, To wrap up, let's see here. We were at an hour and 30 minutes. Hell yeah. So much Spider-Man. Yep. Um, To wrap up real quick, won't go through the whole thing, but generally speaking, uh, where do you feel like this Spider-Man kind of, like how does it adjusted your potential list of, of favorite Spider-Man movies? Honestly, I think this is, this is probably right under spider verse for me but i don't know i think they're tied i think this is spider verse tied just because the jury's still out on what spider verse is going to do right because spider verse 2 is coming out pretty yeah, soon yeah so well we have trailers um yeah but the thing the reason why i say the, ver- the jury's out is because with the venom cameo they pretty much show they're not afraid to put pretty much whatever Sony property they want in the MCU now. Yeah. So before when I was like, it'd be so cool if Miles was in the next Spider-Man movie, it's like animated Miles. Before that was kind of a cute thing that I was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. But now that's way more, like, Don't that worry. could happen. Yeah, absolutely. That could easily happen. Like, the end of Spider-Man part, the end of Spider-Verse part two, and part of part of the hope I have is Spider-Verse part one is all the animated shit, you got Future, you got Miguel, blah, 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 blah. At the very end, where there's, like, the resolution, the part one resolution, is Miles, like, waking up and he's in the MCU. Like... That would yeah. blow my mind. That could, if yeah. he woke up and he like opens his eyes and he's in the MCU and like Tom Holland's like, "Hey, are you okay?" Like even if him like if he's like at feast, yeah, and he's like helping people and like you see Tom, you see Tom Holland's Spider-Man like, "Hey, you're right, you need help," and like the movie just ends. I'm like, yeah, that would be an incredible way to introduce. Dope. Him. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be so dope. I, I I do just generally want the Spider Verse to continue to expand. Yes, I love the idea. I even potentially like the idea of Tom Holland's in a movie that he's still somehow in potential communication maybe not the whole movie Mm -hmm. but maybe just he somehow is able to communicate with the spider verse in Mm -hmm. some way now Um, they could just just throw in madam webb yeah i'm not super familiar with her she's the uh she's the old lady and all the spider-man stuff and all the spider web shit and she basically like she's the one whenever there's a multiverse she okay remember remember twilight zone Remember that guy that narrates? Yeah. In the suit? Mm-hmm. And he's like, welcome to... Blah. She's basically that for the Spider-Verse. Oh, <laughs> like she, cool. She's always sitting in the chair and she kind of gives you like a quick like this or this, this universe. Blah, 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 blah happened. Oh, so okay. Well, like, there was one universe where... I remember in the, in the cartoon she was in it and she was explaining that in this universe Spider-Man... Like this was a Spider-Man that was an actor and like he was playing Spider-Man. <laughs> so it, was like, it was like Tobey Maguire. That's cool. <laughs> and in the powers he was just... An actor playing Spider Man. <laughs> Peter was like, "Well, you know, he probably like, no, I just do this on Saturdays." Like, <laughs> like, so like, it'd be cool if like it's like she's kind of like, "Look, like you've been doing shit. The Spider Verse is out of whack." And like, man, I swear, if they bring it, if they bring in the animated Spider Verse, dude, if they do that, 
I, I'm happy. I'm like, well, I guess Marvel just I know. wins. You would, I didn't even consider that option until like almost right before the movie theater. You're like, you know, what if Miles showed up? I was like, oh, fuck, I wish you wouldn't even brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my Dude, god, no, so, I want it so, so bad. So I'm not going to lie. When, when, when Jamie was talking, and it's like, yeah, I just, just figured you were black. When he said that, my butthole puckered so much. <laughs> I was like, oh, are they going to do it? I know. I, I do. I know. I think I even screamed like, bring him here. I was, I was like, is this actually fucking good? I know, man. Like, and they didn't, but like, that's fine. They gave me so much of that movie. I can't complain. Yeah, totally. But like, the fact that they said it, I'm like, you know, know. you sons of bitches, Bastards. you know, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, man. But what do you think, like, in general, where do you, you said... You... I'd, say, I'd say, yeah, I'd say, I think I'd say it's tied with Spider-Verse. Because before it was... Okay. Raimi was the, the top one, just because it, it just said... Yeah. It set everything up for me. And, like, me as a kid, going to the theater and seeing a honest-to-goodness Spider-Man movie yeah. Yeah. was life-changing. Well, my, so, mind-melting, for yeah. sure, as, so, as, like, a, as a kid. I'd say that, and then I have to say this and Spider-Verse are tied. Just because they both... They both were so important in expanding the Spider-Man mythos yeah. to viewers. Yeah. So when pe- like the fact that I can go up again, I can go up to a stranger and be like, "Hey, you know Miles Morales Spider-Man?" They're like, "Oh yeah, I saw that movie." Like before, I couldn't do that. They're yeah. like, "Who? What? You yeah, mean right. Peter Parker? Like yeah. I kind of know him a little bit, but like the fact that they did, they introduce Spider Gwen. Yeah. They introduce." Um, noir, noir, the different like the two different Peter Parkers Fucking, and then uh, Spider Ham, Spider Ham, Penny <laughs> Parker, yeah, the dude. Mech, like they 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 did so much yeah. like and there's so many Easter eggs in that oh, like man, oh sure. no I oh. Spider Verse I, I just. I can't see that one being dethroned for me. Like that mm-hmm. just that's just such a mm-hmm. fucking um. And I, and that's I, why I think it's tied for me with this. Like, yeah. it, this was great, but it was it's like somebody being like okay. What's your favorite food? Like this thing? Like pizza or tacos? Yeah, it's like they're, they're different. They're, they're different. Both so they're, good. Or better yet, like this main dish food or a dessert? Yeah. Right. Like you can't you can't compare ice cream and pizza. Yeah, totally. Right? Like it's just different. You know. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about the Spider Verse and Spider No Way Home is they they do similar things, but they're also very different. Exactly. Uh, very very exactly. different. So it's like I it's. This could have just been the live action Spider Verse, but mm. it was so much more than that in a way. I, I also just have, have always been this. I'm also just a little partial to animation. Mm-hmm. I always have. And they did it. Spider Verse animation beautifully. Is next level yeah, shit. It's truly. And we're talking about Spider Man stories. Period. Spider Man PS4 is up there. Yeah. Oh, that's oh for sure. Verse. That's and a the, whole and, other conversation. And the Miles, the, the Miles yeah. Morales game. Oh, that's honestly still like it might be my favorite version of Doc Ock. I love mm-hmm. that version of Doc mm-hmm. Ock so I much. I don't know. I like. I like to live. Liv was oh Liv was amazing. That was so good. Liv is incredible. Hey, my geez, friends geez, call geez. me Liv. My friends <laughs> call me Doc. <laughs> I love she. She was so. That was Catherine so Hahn. Oh, you're chatty. Yeah. Hey, um, it's it's like, Catherine Hahn. Yeah. played Agatha. I know. I didn't realize it until later. She's Absolutely great. fantastic. Great. But yeah, I, I think Spider Man first, like that's that's gotta stay number one. But I can't see this not being a top three Spider Man movie. Oh, for me. absolutely. Um, yeah. it, it like I just really truly elevates the entire trilogy for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I still, and I it, I and think it redeems it's, it redeems the other. It not only does it give closure to this phase of Tom Holland's story. But it also redeems the other Spider Man and yeah, other movies totally. that were owned by Absolutely. other studios. Absolutely. You know how crazy that is? It's bonkers. Like, it truly oh. is. And, and not just them, but their villains and other characters. Mm-hmm. It, it's truly bonkers. It's and and I think that you know, when it comes to that, I, I definitely I have thought about it more myself and mm-hmm. as much as I love Spider Man too, I think I'd put the original Spider Man above it. Mm-hmm. I, I just it's so special and yeah. this Willem Dafoe, and Willem Dafoe is just, yeah. it's just incredible. Yeah. Um so yeah, I, I think for for me, um, not talking shit about the other home movies, but this is easily my favorite oh, of the three. Oh, like, like no, Are no you doubt. Kidding? I, of course I, it is. I, 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 you know that I, I really, really, really like um, Mysterio and Far From mm-hmm. Home. I think they did a fantastic job with him. Um, and then Vulture was also a great homecoming. But I feel like the rest of those movies, I, I don't really, I don't know. I feel like aside from them. They didn't hold a lot of weight for me. Mm-hmm. This movie, it, it, it's just, it's so much more from what I want from a Spider-Man movie. Mm-hmm. And not only does it elevate those other movies, but I truly think that it makes them matter, like you said. Yeah, and I feel um, like, again, like, I feel like those movies, what they were doing was, the whole movie was building up. Yeah. It was a build-up. It was, it was basically like, Spider-Man 1 and 2, or No Way Home, or 
Homecoming and Far From Home, where like you're on a roller coaster and it's just click, 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 click. And it's like, okay, it's cool you're on this roller coaster, you're looking around, you're getting higher and higher, you're seeing, okay, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. But then No Way Home was like, and here we go. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, so this is the payoff yeah. of all of this development over and over and like you're getting yeah. to understand who Peter is his relationship with all the different heroes his relationship with his aunt his relationship with Happy like all, it, it basically defined all those things yeah. so then when this happened you're like oh yeah I already know all this yeah. let's go yeah let's I, go, I, right? I completely agree it's a great way of putting mm. it. I, it really it, it is fantastic and it almost makes it make more sense that the last villains were more Stark focused rather mm-hmm. than Peter focused because all of that in a way it wasn't really his story at that point, mm-hmm. you know, and this was truly becoming his story. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I, I just, and, and, you know, and me as a person, I know myself, I, I'm a type of person that sometimes when something is just overwhelmingly popular, mm-hmm. even if I love it myself, I start to get a little cynical about it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, it can't be that good guys. Mm-hmm. But this movie's really great. It's mm-hmm. just it's fucking spectacular, man. Yeah. Like this this is a movie that I feel like they, they did so well for the general audience, but also for true yeah. Spider Man fans. Either even if you're if you're a fan of the comics or you're a fan of the movies or you're just a fan of the character in general, mm-hmm. the these movies are fantastic. So I, I think for me, yeah, it's 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 probably something along the lines of like Spider Verse, Sam Ramy one and this. Yeah. Um, I agree. And I, like like you said, it's it's true because they, they did such a good job of of making you feel like it was worth it. Mm-hmm. Like all like Marvel movies have been very unique to where yeah they need to make good stories, but on top of that, they need each movie to make you feel like it was worth it to watch the other movies. Yeah, for sure. And they nail it. And like yeah. even with this, the thing that I love is they they did such a good job of making you be like yes, I I understand what this character is going through because I saw these. And not only that, but because I saw all the other Marvel right. stuff too, that, that's like the fact that, you know, they referenced the blip, they referenced Mysterio, all these different things that were integral parts of the story. Yeah. I mean, even the Statue of Liberty thing. Yeah. So I, I, I would even say other Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Like, like, even, like the, the ramp, just knowing who what spider-man mm-hmm. is as a concept as as what he is as a hero yep this is what this movie is about too. yeah because like the fact that they were like you're kind of lame it's like yeah you would get that if you understand the narrative of the public's perception of the amazing yeah, for sure universe, most right? definitely so that was great and also like honestly i would agree that this is like high up there for me too because i haven't felt the way i felt when i watched the movie was the only movie that made me feel close to that was Endgame. Mm, yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. That was the only movie I've ever watched where I was like, man, I feel... It's like, it's like you felt full. Yeah, for sure, like totally. When like, you know, you can you can eat McDonald's, and like, I'm not shitting on McDonald's, but like, when you eat McDonald's, sometimes you're not full afterwards. Yeah, You're yeah. like, okay, that, that was good, I feel good, but like, I'm not full. Like, this is like, you had a meal, and you're like, man, that was like it hit the spot. Yeah, totally. I am completely satisfied. Yeah, like I, that's what it felt like. like. I completely agree. Like it, it, it really like they they understood. I, I said it. I think when we were leaving this theater, I think Spider Man. It's so special. It's crazy to think that mm-hmm. one hero mm-hmm. can bring with it the amount of emotion that mm-hmm. In Game did. That was basically you know all of everybody. Yeah. And, and I think that really just shows how special Spider Man is, and mm-hmm. also. That everybody kind of has their own Spider-Man, mm-hmm. I feel like. And I, I really like this Spider-Verse stuff they've really been bringing in lately because they make that a point. It's like, you know, everybody kind of has their own way they feel about Spider-Man mm-hmm. because he's so relatable. Exactly. So in this movie was basically just like, you like Spider-Man, any type of Spider-Man, wherever Spider-Man has been with you in your life. Mm-hmm. This movie is, it's not here to pet you, it's here to... It's here to it to be like I don't know like it, it's it's like it's like you're included in the conversation now you're included in the conversation. Are, well, have you never watched a Marvel or uh, MCU movie, but you you watch the same Raimi movies? Yeah, you're relevant. You know, Spider Man yeah. affected you in some way in your life. In this movie, is gonna make sure that you know that. Yeah, it's, it, it's it, gonna it, acknowledge that. Yeah, it's going to acknowledge the fact that it's like yeah, it doesn't matter how you know Spider Man. Yeah. If you know Spider Man. This movie is for you. Period. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You could be the 1996 Spider-Man series. It could be any of the Spider-Man cartoons you've seen. Mm-hmm. It can be 
the Spider-Man video game, any Spider-Man media you've consumed where you know who Spider-Man is, this movie is for you because we pretty much hit it all. Yeah, absolutely. I agree completely. Hey, it's hard to stop talking about it. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. That's the reason why we record it is I know when we start talking, we're going to talk for a oh, long yeah. time. So oh, yeah. I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, but um, definitely, uh, I, actually, thanks to my bud here, I've got a new computer. So you should hopefully, if you're still watching this, um, you should hopefully be seeing some more content from me pretty soon. Um, and I like the idea of potentially doing another one of these with cause closer to uh, Dr. Strange. Oh yeah, we can um, strange it up, man. Talk about like what what's potentially gonna happen and then and maybe Moon talk Knight because me and my love. Yeah, I gotta catch up on Hawkeye. Some Moon Knight, man. Yeah, no, that looks pretty. Dope. It looks. Do- <laughs> I love that they, they, the fact that they use day and night for it. I'm like, come on guys, <laughs> come on guys. Like, did you like? Because when I was little, like Moon Knight was one of those people, those one of those um heroes that like. I liked for very dumb reasons. Like I was, I was a kid, so like I opened the comic and I'm reading. It's like Mark Spector, blah 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 blah, and it was my name spelled the way I spelled it, <laughs> which was weird for me because yeah. every time it's like it's with a C, not a K, it's with a C, not a K, <laughs> and like for me to see like this badass Batman looking dude that had my name filled out, like little six year old me was like sold. <laughs> so, like, I, will, I will read every one of these things. he was really cool like, yeah. was, he's a very interesting character and I, I never thought I would see the day where I would see a mainstream what like the most mainstream company in the world making a Moon Knight show that looks that well produced for sure man like the production quality looks insane in yeah. that man like oh we're living in some crazy times right now. I'm going to watch again right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's some good, good times. But we'll, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, like I said, if you ended up watching this whole thing, hope you found some enjoyment out of it. Two guys ranting about Spider-Man. Spidey Squad 2. Yep. Um, we will, we yep. will come Spidey back. Spidey Squad 2, Multiverse Boogaloo. Bo- 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 <laughs> I think that's probably going to be the name there of it. The <laughs> there we go. Um, well, cool, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for chatting with me, man. Time, Absolutely. And like I said, hopefully you'll see some more videos soon. Um, we always got nerds to, to talk about me and him, so we might just do another one of these for something else, but, um, yeah. maybe some video games too. There you go. Bye guys.